Here we go. All right, what do we got? I got to turn on the mics here. Uh, we got Florentine in studio, of course, Jim Norton, and now Nick DiPaolo, who was waiting in the lobby for 20 minutes <laughs> to make sure everyone knew that. They got me. No, that's a line from the fucking Godfather. I wasn't being a prick. Oh. Come on, Ope. Oh, I'm sorry. They had me waiting in the lobby, Mike. Well, you, you should now, Opie the... thinks I'm being an asshole. No, you should have <laughs> added the mic part, and then I would have known. I said, Mike. You did? Yes. I apologize. I could have a complaint? Come on. No, Nick's, uh, like me. Nick's one of our favorite people. It's been a while, too, since Nick has been in studio. Uh, we were just discussing the Amy Schumer sketch, 12 Angry Men. Yeah. You got to act with Paul Giamatti. Yeah, Goldblum and John Hawks. That was a nice it was lineup. It fucking awesome. And they're, they're looking at that sketch as the sketch that Amy has done so far. Well, good. That'll help a career. I'll be sitting home going, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> Maybe I can get in the sequel. <laughs> you pop no, up. I know. It was so great that she even asked me. I had already booked a flat. I was booked my vacation to St. Barts with my wife and shit. And you had to blow and it I off? literally, this is why I probably am where I am career-wise. I'm like, I already booked my flight. She's like, what are you fucking nuts? We wrote this around your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> so how did? what happened with the trip? My wife had to go down early. Uh, yeah. And luckily, she got a hold of a girlfriend of hers that lives in L.A. Okay. And so that girlfriend flew to St. Bart, met her in St. Bart's for the first five days. So you, so and you, then I came down for the last five. Okay. So you missed five days of vacation. I missed five days, but it was worth. I mean, that fucking not that, that sketch was That's absolutely the right move ab- to make. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I was. There's no way it wasn't going. Yeah. When I heard, you know, fucking Giamatti, I fucking love. I'm, I've seen like sideways eleven times. The it's guy's amazing. so compelling. I, I was asking you off mic. Uh, I was convinced that Paul Giamatti's just a, an asshole, and he's actually <laughs> not a good actor because he's in the Brian Wilson thing, and he's amazing in that. He's in, amazing in everything. We had is what co- it comes down to. But it seems yeah. like he plays sort of the same kind of pricky guy in everything he does. So I'm I'm starting to assume that he's just a prick in real life. But you're telling me it, it, that's not the truth. No, that we were having that conversation. Yeah. I go, well, I go, you you're way different than. Anchor. I know. I, I, I can, uh, <laughs> also, I get to read for it. It's like, asshole pie. I'm like, yeah, welcome to the club. You know, what do you think I'm reading for? I haven't read from any priests or uh, fatherly roles. Like, you know, so, the problem but, with that sketch, though, is it, it just reminded me too much of 12 Angry Men. You know, yeah. like, that's a little close, and they probably didn't even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, nailed it, didn't they? Oh, Holy my God, wow. yeah. It's on YouTube, 12 Angry Men Inside Amy So Schumer. funny and so smart. The dildo, uh, so good. Man. Debating the dildo. And, Nick, you said, you what, that was like three days to shoot that? Like 14 hours? Two days. Two days? Yeah. Why'd you miss five hours. days of re- re- vacation? Uh, huh? Why'd you miss five days of vacation? Yeah, uh, it was only two days of shooting. Nick. You wanted three days of peace at the house with... by yourself? <laughs> 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 something to do with the flights and, and uh, I, I can't remember, but I missed uh, five days. Or four days. Is that is St. Bart's all right? That's fucking awesome. I've heard great things about it's it. It's awesome. Where is it? Yeah. It's uh, right off the coast of, uh, you know what, Montreal. Jersey. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, the West Indies, whatever the fuck. I, I hear amazing things about it's, it's, the place. Oh, it's fucking, it's the balls. What do you I, do down there? Just chilled out? or Yeah, I, just, I don't do anything. We have a, this is, we rent the same place. It's on a cliff. Wow, and uh, nice. overlooking this. It's just one room. It's like, I guess, how they used to build houses in Greece back in the day. Like, the yeah. hinges, like you can open up a wall to the house. Wow. It opens up. So now your house is open. And right. You're overlooking a cl- It's oh, crazy. Wow. Nice. It's got to feel safe and comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at night. There's a kitchen outside. It's, it's fun. It's just, uh, and there's a deck right next to it. A deck. Yeah. And that, we, we don't move from that. How isolated are you from other people? Um, Fairly isolated. But yeah. you bring just bring groceries? There's a there's a market there that we go to. It, it, we've gone so many times. It's like being at you know in your hometown. I'm gonna you know. call you up because I I've always wanted to go. Now you, you can give it, me the man. lay of the land. It's clean. It's it's you know it's just uh, a lot of celebrities you don't, go down. There. You don't do any uh, activities like zip line or snorkel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Nick. What's no. wrong with a, what's I can't wrong with see, a good snorkel? I can't see Nick getting up at six in the morning going on a friggin' uh, a, a field trip with people. Are you fucking kidding <laughs> me? I want them to I actually read. I bring like five books. Right. You're right. It's a field trip for adults. Do you ever do those tours, Nick? Oh, Christ, uh, Jimmy. Do what? This isn't going well. No, no, but I, have you, I, I can't picture you being on one of those where you're going to go look at some rocks or something. No, no. No. The wife always circles that shit. 
Really? I'm like, what are you fucking doing? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get involved. Jesus, how long have you fucking known me? <laughs> Let's go. Uh... I don't mind a good snorkel every once in a while. I did do the snorkeling and, thing. And, and then I moved on to diving, which was the best thing I ever did. I I love diving. Have yeah. you ever? Have you ever? Fuck no, I don't like being underwater. You realize they're I... all, the, all the shit is scared of you. They That's all, not the point. The point it. is, I'm underwater. Anything. I'm not worried about the fucking fish. Uh, the that thing pops out of your great. mouth, you're fucked. <laughs> no, they have an extra yeah. one. That's how I feel when I'm with a tranny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought, as soon as I left my hand, I go, this is coming back. And I go, Lightning speed. <laughs> oh, you guys got to dive. Have you ever dove? No. It's in a wonderful. Pool. It's great. No, I, I don't like that, no. being that far under. It's, it's very peaceful <laughs> down there, Nick. Yes, I know. You're alone but with your thoughts. That piece can be broken real quickly when that dang thing pops out of yeah. your mouth. You and you're 60 feet in. under. Oh, bullshit. Then that one's broken. I don't trust fucking people. <laughs> then you got a guy. A you guy trust that people helps that out. make those fucking things? Then you got Come. a guy that comes over and helps you out if you need to. Oh, yeah. That guy's got his back to you. He's fighting off a fucking He's too yellow busy. tuna. He's too busy trying to pick up the broads. <laughs> That's what usually happens. The what ones the, that are diving with just their bikinis. So they're giving <laughs> them all the attention as you're fucking wallowing in the back. Yeah, no, Stephen Hawkins more active on vacation. <laughs> I, I fucking lay there in a chair like a vegetable, drinking you know, El Presidente, and getting you know, the shits. You don't uh, <laughs> zip line? No, I nah. just do the white lines. I'm old school. I'm like boss. <laughs> I zip lined in Mexico. It was awesome. What's that? It was absolutely awesome. I zip lined in Mexico last year. Really? Yeah. It was in uh, the zip camp line there. back into the country. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have one that runs from fucking El Ciudad <laughs> to San Diego. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet you we should get the Donalds out there. The Stango brothers with a painful look in their face. <laughs> oh, that was racist. These fucking guys want me to talk about racism on camera. Yeah, that's fucking. That that, that can help. That can be. Yeah. You might have some How's that going to be funny? Yeah, it'll be funny. yeah, I'm yeah. sure that'll help my career as a white guy. You can stop with your liberal horseshit. <laughs> Are you saying the Stangles are going to sink your boat? Yes. It's already sunk, man. <laughs> We're just coming up with some ideas. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good you one. You certainly don't have to do that. Yeah, I know I won't. Uh, what do you think of Donald Trump? Fucking love him. Vote How great tomorrow. is he? How great is he? Refreshing. He's I never so thought refreshing. he was that bright, you know? Really? Yeah. No, he, I'm like, how is this guy this rich? He sounds like kind of a dope. He's pompous. But, yeah. So far, this is not a good campaign endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to spin. Look, they love me. I love them. Trump says he will win the Latino vote. Yeah. He probably He's, will. He is yeah, he, so how cocky. How many Latinos is he fucking... You know, employee. Work employee. Employ. He he doesn't know if he employs illegals. I think came out as well, right? Look, he's on every fucking so what? TV. Either way, man. well, of course, because he's, he's getting all he's the a attention. successful white man that said something that might be considered racist. Right. You want to get on TV? Uh, illegal immigrants working at Trump Hotel site. And look at jerk off the report. Uh, Anderson with his stupid glasses. I love Trump. He's uh, he's making everyone honest. I've been saying well, this for a thing. few weeks. Well, that's the thing. I don't care. He's probably not going to be the nominee, but he's going to keep the other guys honest. They want him out of that debate so bad. Of course bad. they do. They don't I, want him in it, and I hope he gets in it. That will I make too. I, I think the GOP finally said that we need, he needs to calm the fuck down. They're basically trying to calm him down. Well, maybe they yeah, realize they that he's not going away. Do. Of course you can't tell Trump what to do. Where would you? I, I saw, he gets shit done. He'll fire everyone, that guy. <laughs> he'll just go up and get fired. What's been? For fire. Oh, <laughs> uh, look, see, there's the, the what we were just talking about. A pop star caught saying she hates America. Who but cares? They, they don't explain why she said it. I know. But this is what they the do worst. on Fox. On CNN, they, it don't say anything racist. And on Fox, it's she's not a patriot. It's just, it's she shit. explained it's herself perfectly that she looks at all the, you know, the, the treats that are available to Americans and she this says, boy, little twat. Yeah. We're still worried about what a 22-year-old says at a donut shop. Who gives a fuck? Well, Jimmy, if you get caught saying you hated fucking, I don't know, Nigeria and Dunkin' Donuts, you'd be all over the fucking news. But that's true. <laughs> yeah, you would be. You'd be in deep shit. But, so that, doesn't make, but that doesn't make it right. <laughs> fucking foreign it's little plot. still nosy. It's still Where's nosy. she from, anyways? Uh, she's from I don't know. From Florida. Oh, Florida? She's from Florida. Yeah, she's she's uh, so Nick, Florida. You're, you're telling me, Florida. Nick, you're telling me if, if, if you were single, you wouldn't you wouldn't bang her because she said, I hate America. He's banging her now that he's married. He's I, <laughs> you know, I love Florence. Everything goes back to... You, we, we could have like another 9-11 up the street going on right now. We go, yeah... You're gonna tell me you're not gonna fuck Afghan women? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you fuck a girl if she was nine years plus eleven? Yeah, yeah exactly. Funny. <laughs> uh, but uh, she is a pretty girl. Holy Christ! God, is she, yeah, she a delight? She's tiny. You met oh, her. I'd make her clean my toilets. I'd yeah. put her in a maid outfit like her parents. <laughs> 
But this Trump guy is awesome. I, I love, love Good, him. But he gets shit done. You think they're going to let him into Washington? He's also entertaining as all hell. And then they had Hillary no. on CNN, and you you know, she, she, she looked like a fucking robot. She stinks. Of she's not a, she's she a hat, ball of, hat partisan, dog-faced, thick-ankled. The best thing she did, everything, she's so smart. Yeah, she sucked a smart guy's dick. That was yeah. the best moment. She has sex appeal, though. That's what she has yes. going for. Yes, that, There you go, RNC nothing, to Trump. Nothing like a skin, skin-tight pantsuit. Tone it down on immigration, the RNC to Trump. She's pleasant to look at, at least, this woman. Who is this? Uh, she's oh, my God. She's, she's a Republican. She's a Latina Republican, yeah, she's, actually. Uh, is she kind really? of a right-winger, yes. yeah. She looks like a preemie. She's fucking <laughs> awful looking. <laughs> Holy shit. She uh, looks like she was uh, born in three months. And she she's looks talking. like the guy that was trimming my neighbor's roses. <laughs> oh, my God. Is she frightening looking? Anna Navarro. She's on CNN a lot. They, yeah, they, she's on those Sunday morning shows. Yeah, her eyes, regular, are, her eyes are too weird looking. They're too far apart. They are far apart. It's like a child blinking. Drop your balls right in there, Jimmy. Well, she's also a Jeb Bush supporter, too. Is oh, good. I want to yeah. Bush. Good. Uh, do you want Jeb Clinton? No, I don't. I can't right, stand good, him. Good. His reaction. I thought it was patently offensive. That's what we need. More fucking yeah, knee-jerk political correctness coming out of a white so guy's Nick, fucking face. Nick, if Trump doesn't get it, who do you want in the Republican Party? If Trump doesn't get it, I yeah. like Rand Paul. Yeah. A lot, yeah. Of, a lot of people like the Rand Paul. I, like Rand. I think he's a sleeper. He's going to... Um, I didn't like that TSA stunt he pulled, though. Like, that annoyed me. I like his father, but that TSA thing he did really annoyed me. Like, oh, they're the devil. It's like, stop it. People who don't want airport security, what the fuck are you talking about? You want to just... It doesn't make sense to me. Eh, I don't know. I'm fucking... I He's like it's a real... time for them to go to you. Wouldn't you. Don't you want somebody who would love to abolish the IRS? The fuck? That is true, yeah, but that well, would never happen. Just on that alone. But how happen. are we going to get that done? Never as far happen. as the TSA, they got people who couldn't cut it at Wendy's working there. What the fuck? <laughs> Maybe you need better employees, but the idea, I like security. Dude. Kid from fucking, anyways, <laughs> I'm sure I'll stop with that statement. But they're, but they're never going to get yeah, save the it, Save it for your racist in America speech yes. later. <laughs> oh, yeah, racist in America. <laughs> save fucking, it for that podcast. Might be the yours. least racist country on the face of the fucking earth. Well, MTV is doing an important documentary, I think. Which oh, I'm really Jesus, looking don't get me nuts, Jimmy. What? Like, it's it's Setting me up, you prick. No, I'm not. It's an important documentary on white privilege. I can't believe it. Is it really? Yes. I not. haven't seen the. I have not you seen the trailer. You want to see the trailer? I uh, do because I'm sure it's good. MTV's white privilege documentary. Why do you guys doing? sabotage my career? I literally have I, I haven't seen it. I have not. I, I saw this in the prep sheet. Oh bullshit! You could have memorized. Jimmy. I would tell you in a second, but I have not seen it. I'm sure it's not going to make me not take me down a notch. Where, <laughs> where's the trailer? MTV. <laughs> uh, I go over that see. studio and burn it down. That is ridiculous. We, I, we white somewhere. privilege. We also, yeah, we white also privilege. Some... I was at the stand last night. I made twenty five dollars. Here's your white privilege. Well, well blacks make less, huh? So Black comics doing... make less. All right, here we go. The white privilege. Right. Uh, white people official trailer from MTV. A film for MTV on what it means to be young and white. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what? Pause right there. Many white people feel uncomfortable talking about race. A hundred percent true. Exactly. It's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Of course. If you say the wrong thing, then suddenly you are a racist. That's what I'm telling the Stangle brother. I'm trying to be careful here. I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to offend people. I feel like you guys are attacking me now. If I bring up any sort of race issue with my parents, they immediately assume that I'm demonizing them. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Big uh, fat girl crying. How oh, would your life be different if you weren't white? I uh, can't see this. Want me to document it? What does that mean? We've never history. had to internalize what white people have done in America, but here you can't escape that. Feels like I'm being discriminated against. You white kind of privilege. get this feeling that things belong to you. Oh, I'm getting right? uncomfortable. It's, it's uncomfortable. Hey, this is great. Let's get all uncomfortable together. I'll say this is more balanced than I thought it would be. That's more of a fucking people talking about, hey, look, I feel like if I, I couldn't say tell because I couldn't see what you're watching. I couldn't tell if those people were black or white. They're all white. Talking. They're all white. Really? We don't watch yeah. anything but white people in here. If a black person's on screen, volume off, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Nick needed to look at the screen like we were. Yes. yes. Why, right, why didn't you put you this? you got 19 TVs here. I'm staring at fucking <laughs> some Asian broad on CNN, bad mouthing Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a pint of cunt pop chicken. Listen, how do you how do you think Trump felt when that fucking girl got shot in San Francisco? Tell me he wasn't doing front handstands oh, in his bedroom. He was absolutely. Well, by doing the way, what flips. was that? Did he just target her, or was he shooting? He what the he fuck? Said he was shooting at a sea lion. 
He said that's what he that. said. Well, I'm sure his lawyer came up with it. What's yeah. the translation? Idiot. There's obviously one letter off in the trans- lion. There was something oh, there. Oh, that it's okay. <laughs> that it's okay. Shooting at a sea lion. There's a lot of sea lions out there. I think the bigger question, why was he deported fucking five well, yeah, times? Seven of like they said it was just a random fucking and shooting. And I'm with a sanctuary city. Just the concept of that is Terrible. fucking proves we're finished. Liberal fucks. <laughs> Are you, do you do you feel? Do you lean more right? No. <laughs> what am I supposed to be quiet now about this? I can't say liberal fucks. You could say my whatever you want. Here. All my follow. friends are looking at me cockeyed now. We're not. Believe me, you could say whatever you want. I'm not uncomfortable. <laughs> Drop n bombs. I'm happy. <laughs> no. <for you. laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing better than watching. There's nothing better than watching Nick at the, at the stand yeah. working on new material and it doesn't go over and he just starts screaming at the audience. You liberal fucking cunts, you New York. I cities. say that when it goes over well. <laughs> yeah. I just can't. Stay on the side of them <laughs> no, with their heads cocked and their stupid Janine Garofalo glasses. I want to slap up their faces. <laughs> just fucking, just arrogant, pompous little do nothings who think they know everything. I fucking hate them with a the pen. Anyways, Nick, I'll be Nick, there tomorrow night at eight o'clock. <laughs> Nick calls the audience cunts. Making, his, his first joke, and then he has them in the palm of his hand. Thirty seconds later, they love it. They know it's coming. I'm like, the, I'm like that crazy Italian guy in the village. Remember the Vin, Vince in the chin that used to wander around his bathroom? Gigante, oh, yes. yeah, yeah. They know. They know. It's coming. Oh, nice in the outside the stand. Yeah, the stand. comedy cell. They get it, right? Uh, they know I'm kidding. I, I, we got some great Trump clips. I want to play the the, the one where he uh, just goes after the reporter. Can we skip to the good uh, part of this? Yeah. All right. Uh, Donald Trump shuts down reporter and insults some of his critics during the interview. This guy's all in. He's doubling down. He ain't backing up. You think he's going to hang in there? a lot of money, too. He's but- going he's gonna to end up, you know, being a pundit on Fox after probably making, you know, selling books and whatever. But I when does he, he tap out? When does he tap out? I don't out? know. I hope he stays in, like I said, to keep all these other stiffs a little bit honest. It's, it's, it's harder than you right, think, Jimmy? though. It, yeah, it's the, well, it's the amount of fucking, uh, the, the way they get into your life, man. No, you're right. They, 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 they're trying to tear him to shreds. But illegal work. immigrants working for him at Trump. You know, like they, but they he's worth there. billions, and, and, and he loves the attention. We all know that. Yep. So that's what he's that's like what he's guilty of hiring a legal. If, no, I'm saying if there's anything in there he doesn't want. Like, uh, if there's anything, that will stop him. But he may just keep going until they somehow I get him out. You yeah. think the marriages will mess him up? I could, what, is it three marriages? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. No, he, has what, an, he, has an answer, he has an answer for everything. So I don't know if, what messes him up in the end. We got the we have that clip. Yeah, we're it up. Oh, we're yeah I don't know how they okay. get rid of them. They're gonna, they have to get rid of them. They have to. Probably a car accident. Like yeah, they did lady die, you know. Could <laughs> <laughs> uh, be his limo. Yeah, and then <laughs> Dodie Fayed going through a tunnel. <laughs> we got somebody makes a hard left in the Holland Tunnel. Trump's. Dead. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got the clip. We lost 2,300 armor-plated Humvees. Not three or four or seven. We lost 2,000 in one day. 2,300 Humvees. I say, that's impossible. How can you lose that many? A bullet gets fired into the air, and the people that we're giving these Humvees to, they run like bandits. And the enemy takes them over. The enemy has better equipment than we have because we're foolish. You're for the Second Amendment. Do you have a gun? I have the a license to have a gun. Yes, I do. Do you own one? Yes, I do. Do you use it? Gun range? It's none of your business. Yeah, really. It's really what none of your business. I have a license to have a gun. Gun control. Good for him. What is? What are you talking about? Or a you stronger me background. A a stronger yes, background. I have a gun. gun control. Yes, I have a gun, and yes, I have a permit to have a gun. Stronger background checks. What about that? Uh, is would, there is there I, any steps that you would take it, I, to make it harder to get? What liberal douchebags talking right now? Into that, you start getting into a situation, the slippery slope, where all of a sudden you're going to really violate the Second Amendment. I don't want to do anything to violate the Second Amendment. To me, the Second Amendment is very important. I want to talk about some what some of the Republicans have been saying about you just this week. You've been very divisive for the party. You have Charles Krauthammer, who's called you a rodeo clown. Well, Charles Krauthammer is a totally overrated person who really dislikes <laughs> me. <laughs> 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 totally the guy's got the no best. feeling below his waist. <laughs> He's just the best. <laughs> He's doing. He was totally in favor of the war in Iraq. He wanted to go into Iraq, and he wanted to, you know, so? stay there forever. So, you know, these are overrated people. I see who it is. I mean, you can mention name after name. <laughs> By the way, you're going to mention the ones that do like Trump? You don't do that, do you? <laughs> exactly. You Goldberg has compared you to a failed man who mistook flattery for insight. George Will. I'm a failed man. I'm worth a fortune. I built. You know, <laughs> Who's asking him the questions? Oh, I can't see them. There's no, they don't show. It's just him. I went out, I made a fortune, a big fortune, a tremendous fortune. I'll be announcing that in about a week because I have to file my papers, bigger than people even understand. 
I have a book called The Art of the Deal. I do The Apprentice. The Art of the Deal was like the number one business book of all time, or just about. I think it was. And I do The Apprentice, and NBC's angry at me because they renewed The Apprentice and I wouldn't do it. And that's one of the reasons that NBC's so angry at me. And then I get called by a guy that they can't buy a pair of pants. I get called names. Give me a break. So you will release your financials it, on time? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna, I think we're going to have it on time. In that's fact, eight days from now. Me, excuse me. There you go. Nice interrogation. Is that yeah. considered fucking journalism? Uh, it was great when he's like, you're not going to say anything that people are like me. And she just went right back to the questions. Yeah, no, robot. Fucking. Yeah. Like yeah, him. and that was that a shot at Christie, a guy that can't buy a pair of pants? No, it was somebody else. I think he's talking. I about thought it was Crowd Hammer because he's paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then he should have said shoes. <laughs> I just is he barefoot all the time? <laughs> yeah. I just love Trump. My God, uh, Trump claims he didn't authorize insulting retweet about Jeb Bush's wife, but also doesn't regret it. What was that about? That was on the immigration thing, right? Do we have that as well, there, Eric? We do. Yeah, can, can we hear that, and then we'll move on to some other things. You've been very vocal in the media, very accessible. You're on Twitter. There was a tweet, a tweet that caused you problems that was rescinded. It was a retweet uh, about Jeb Bush's wife. You yeah. said, uh, the, t the original tweet said Jeb Bush has to like the Mexican illegals because of his wife. That was somebody else said that. You retweeted it. Did you authorize that? Did you regret No, I that? didn't authorize it, but I will say this. Look, I have millions of people on Twitter and Facebook. I think I have over five million people on both. Ooh. It's a lot of people. It's sort of like... So do you regret that? It's sort of like owning a newspaper, a big one without the losses. It's good. I don't regret anything. Look, some, I, we, we, it was a retweet. It wasn't me. And it was actually, if you look at it carefully, it was a retweet of a Breitbart story that was a very good story, a very fair story, a very strong story, a very good story. Uh, but do I regret? No, I don't regret it. I mean, you know, look, the, the, I would say that he would. If my wife were from Mexico, I think I would have a soft spot for people from Mexico. I can understand. Do you think that influences his position on illegal immigration? I think it could. I mean, maybe it should. If he loves his wife, and I know he does, I hear she's a lovely woman, by the way. So if he loves his wife and she's from Mexico, I think it probably has an influence on him, yes. I can understand that. Bravo. That's Jesus. fair. Nothing but honesty from Donald oh, Trump. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so it's controversial. So, it's so refreshing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Orwell said something about that. I can't remember what it was. But <laughs> no, and, and when you're living in, you know, under totalitarian powers, if you say something honest, you're actually a rebel revolutionary. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. But, well, uh, he said uh, in an insane society, even a sane man must appear insane. Yes. That's from Star Trek. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I, thought was, I thought that was Esky at the comedy show. But there you have it. Every day there's more Trump clips, keeping everyone honest out there, making them really have to talk Look, he, about shit. He could have been a little more artful, you know, with his first, the statement that got him in all kinds of sure. trouble. He's a little, you know, clumsy yeah. with that. Yeah, we kind of said that on the show. It, it Maybe a little more clever with it, but whatever. Whatever. Do you think he's going to reveal all his financial stuff? Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. What's he got to hunt? He's loving the attention. That's the number one thing here. Donald Trump loves attention. I he think loves that he, people he, talking about him. To, to tackle the stuff that he wants to talk about, immigration, he's so honest, you just got to really, it's like you know the world you're living in, you just got to make sure you're saying what you want to say. That's all. Just say it the way you want to say it, but make sure your message is, don't. But that's the, the problem, Jimmy. If you say stupid. it the way you want to say it, you get in trouble. They, they want you to say it the way they want you to say it. But right. he, 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 I don't think right. he said it the way he would have wanted to say he, it. He, he was clumsy with that. Yeah. It was, I mean, off, it was off the cuff. Yeah. You know. And that's the, but, but people want honesty, and it's like sometimes with honesty, you have clumsy missteps. Well, no, exactly. People say stuff well, it's exactly. Stupid. The famous thing, we, we say we want honesty, and then someone's right. honest, and you're like, what the fuck? Why did you say that? So it, Really? It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Of course. We, people claim like they want honest discussion about race or whatever it is, and then it happens, and people get upset. And then they want you know their livelihood taken away. So. Yeah. No, I don't say that, but you said you wanted honesty discussion well, yeah. well they want to lecture us yeah uh, i like being lectured do you like to do you I enjoy it <laughs> i do too when i was in fucking university of maine getting a 2.6 in business administration <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm pushing that number actually <laughs> uh where you at with jared how great is this jared story yeah i just it's uh, unbelievable what's the what's the, they were in his house for 11 hours 11 yeah. hours i learned that this morning wow what are you looking for for 11 hours maybe they're just fans 
How long is, subway no, stuff. Exactly. How long does it take uh, a hard drive? That takes a few minutes. You grab the computer, the hard drive, you get the it fuck out of there. It can take anywhere from 11 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes. Well, Jim should know. How long does it take? My hard drive is is, is strikingly boring. It's it's really as dirty as I get. That that's one that just like really oh, yeah man, I'm a piece of shit but that you don't have twelve year old kids in wet bathing suits running around well I didn't, that's, 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 that's a screensaver <laughs> <laughs> that's where it starts some yeah. kid doing a cannonball naked first of all it's called the spring out it's called the sprinkler series <laughs> <laughs> but no I don't uh, I just never got that one that's just hmm. a fucking weird predatory thing man I, I I would much rather see the 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 guy. Being the uh, the victim of uh, say a taller woman with big feet and some tinkle. That's all I want to say. <laughs> big feet and some tinkle. That should be the name of next CB. Jimmy. Big feet and big tinkle. Big feet and tinkle. Big feet and tinkle. He's yeah. uh, he always gave me the willies. That guy. He was a little he crazy. I'm right next to you. He sounds kind of fruity. What? I'm just talking. Not you. Oh. Mm. So there was some story about him when he was in college. He would run like this whole porn thing. Yes. Yeah. But that's just smart. Yeah, I know. It's like you charge. Just making money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you figure out how to make a few bucks while you're in college. Son, that wasn't that bad, right? Why didn't that come out before uh, yesterday that he did that in college? That's been out for years. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. I guess because I, I guess I broke no that one was paying attention to Jared until this big. I was yeah. so fascinated. Who chose him? Why should this guy be set for life? Who did he blow in in Hollywood? They got him this campaign he's, that he, lasts for twenty years. He looks like a just a middle American. This is zillion of them. Perfect. Yeah, but that's the guy. It's almost like Peyton Manning. That's why everyone Peyton's like a middle American goober. Oh, uh, we love Peyton. Yeah, yeah but that's all those silly commercials and Jared's I, like. But I'm saying almost the, the same way. Why did why did but why did his thing? Well, why did somebody he, say we're going to make you a star for the next twenty years? Because it was he had an original it, idea. An original idea, which was I lost Jared weight. Did? Yeah, I was like, hey, I lost weight eating these he in college. Them? I believe he did. I believe that yeah. was his. Thing. Well, let's find out. How do, how did the? I mean, Carl, who's his agent? Yeah, let's let's see sure how this came mind. about. <laughs> you really think he pitched Subway? I think that he came out with the fact that he in college had eaten a lot of sandwiches and lost weight, and he said I did it by eating Subway sandwiches. I'm almost positive in '99 that was somebody how it, fell for it. I've been pitching ideas for 20 years. Can't get a bite. Uh, <laughs> we got a great <laughs> we got a great line coming in. A great line. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's say hi to Joe in Jersey. Joe, how do you do, Joe? Find the room comfortable, do you? No complaints. Hello, everybody, and how are you this morning? All right, hey. Joe. What's up? Okay, so Subway's got a new uh, pitch line. Really? Uh, now, because of Jared, absolutely, it's called uh, Five-Year-Old Footlong. Joe, your phone crapped out. You, I, I hear what? Jared's got a great pitch. What would you say? A uh, five-year-old. What the hell's wrong with his phone? Joe. You, 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 you are you phone. Dude. You're saying Jared, and I know you got a good joke. It's... I heard so, five-something, okay. but that yes. was... Hold on. Hold... You're breaking uh, it out, man. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Uh, we are oh, yeah. you, you, you dink. <laughs> All right, fuck you guys. <laughs> Same awful joke three times. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I just love that. Caroline says an amateur chat on Monday. Get on there and throw that shit out. Of <laughs> Bring a few of your friends. God bless you, Joe. We're just giving you the business. That, that was, really was a fucking good one. That was a zinger, Jimmy. It sure was. Five year old foot long. Um, I'm gonna one, use that on my. Why don't we use James Corden figure... set? That's, uh, so. What, how did this come about? Well, the Subway Diet was his own idea. It but, was. But he, uh, there was an article written by a dorm mate of his, yeah. and um, the local uh, Subway took the idea to the big Subway people, and they embraced the whole idea. Okay. So, yeah, that's why he got it. So it was his idea, and they went with it. Yep. Sure. And, and I, I Boy, can't they stress enough that decision. how much I dislike a, a Subway sandwich compared to a Blimpy. That's all. I, I'll let it go. Well, his other idea they didn't like. What was the other idea? Where he's like, a lot of times, I like to look at nude children and eat a sandwich. <laughs> and like, That's not going to sell sandwiches. <laughs> and they're like, Can a lot we just of time the sandwich is dry. <laughs> and I like to, yeah, I like to moisten it with tears. <laughs> tears of a Boy Scout kid, the tears of a youngster. What a cripola. <laughs> He's holding his pants. <laughs> that looks like a kid holding his. All right. I'm with you on Subway. I never understood. It's so mediocre. I don't I mean, like it. It could flourish. They weigh their meat. It's they weigh it. Fucking guy pulls salami out of his back pocket. It's, it's like cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you look in the back room at Subway, it's like a scene out of New Jack City. It's a bunch of black chicks naked in the waist up, wang pursuit, and American cheese. The fucking clock has no 12. <laughs> yeah, the clock's got no 12 on it. They're very stingy with yeah. their meat. Nick's right. She's oh, got yeah. gabagool on her left hand. Shoot her. Yeah, don't worry about it. Give me a couple extras. Like I said Relax. before, the only green thing in there is spinach, and they hide it. They yeah. won't give it to you. I they hate that. Who knows where they get that? that? Every once in a while, I'll go and grab one of those. They're, they're all right. No, they're I'm no good. on a regular basis. I feel bad asking a kid to make me a sandwich, like when it's a minority. With my white privilege and all that shit. Yeah, you feel guilty, Don't you right? You feel weird. Yeah, especially saying like this first. Yeah, I goes make a snappy <laughs> asshole. But why does it take four people to make your subway too? Well, the, the one guy does the meat, and then they pass it on to the vegetable yeah, guy who yeah. passes it on to the cheese you guy. You add up their IQs, it's like eleven. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Four part-time employees. You don't have to pay benefits for any of them. It's yeah, a smart huh? business model. Oh. Mm. I was actually in Philly. It's a true story. <laughs> I, was I, was at, I was at Subway, and the girl making my sandwich, young black girl, was breastfeeding her baby. She was making my sandwich. Really? This is a true story? Uh, yes. Come on. I Jesus swear to Christ. God. Oh, wow. I swear to fucking God. So what took over? The hunger or the heart on? <laughs> how, are, how are her tits? She's like, you want uh, pickles on? I don't want tit milk. It's salami. Uh, uh, maybe she's just feeding Jared's girlfriend. <laughs> 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 when they're breastfeeding in public, you look, right? Look. Hey, I don't think look. Film, at least she's working, right? She I could have been sitting home collecting a check. She was yeah. out there doing it. Good I film her. it and I yell, nice tits. There's a lot of people that are disgusted by that. I look. I take a peek. Of course. I of peek. Course. Now, you don't want to peek, peek, right? Now, you want to look. You don't want to peek. is creepy. You want to just gla like a glance. You want a gander. Fuck that. A nice hard stare for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Scare her in the baby. Because they're never that full. Those tits at that time are full. They're never going to be that good. Exactly. This is their best moment. Girls so. show it off, too. You notice when Absolutely. they're little, they tits, when they're pregnant, they always wear, like, low cut shirts. Imagine if your cock grew that big. Be showing everybody if you can very, uh, Yeah, but not if you had to do that with it. <laughs> All right, go ahead, feet on it, kid. <laughs> they're very healthy looking. You know what I like to say when, it, when they're breastfeeding? I like robust. to go, uh, why, don't you, why, don't you, uh, why don't you switch them off to the other one? <laughs> oh, my God. I notice you got one open. Mind if I sit in? <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm out like a light in front of the yarn barn for two hours of them all. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of my new special. <laughs> Not the one. That's the one. Uh, I, I guess uh, now we got to move on to South Carolina. The Confederate flag. Oh, for Christ's sake! What are you trying to do? Blow my blood pressure? In the fucking room? <laughs> <laughs> These are all the hot topics. Take it today. down, I say. Take it down. It's done enough damage, hasn't it? Isn't that the right answer? Stangle Brothers? Mm, well, is... Why all of a sudden are we... Why all of a sudden are we... Ooh. I noticed the Letterman Ooh. short took a hard turn to the left once you guys get in there. Ooh. You think I'm crazy? You think it was them? Fuck think yeah. I take responsibility for anything. Huh? No. <laughs> for nothing. Bill Chef, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, put it all on Bill. I'm busting your chops. Yeah. Good old Bill. I uh, have no opinion. They vote, How about that? They voted no to take it down. The flag. I think they voted to take it down, right? Yeah, yeah I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, enough with it already. I think they should take it off state property, but you can't ban it. Taking it off the Duke's exactly. house, like, that's just childish. No, I know. No, that's what I'm talking about. It's silly. It's Lefting like, fucking fascist. We're just an unbalanced <laughs> country. No one has known how to just do something a little bit. Like, when everybody gets obsessed, it's fucking, it's embarrassing. So we're supposed to pretend there was no slavery? Okay, then start acting like it. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Put that in your fucking <laughs> oven smoke it. What are they doing on Fox? Well, the well, mayor gotta, by his police chief. Look, you got to give Daniel Snyder, the owner of Redskins, credit, though. He's like, look, I'm not fucking changing the name. It's too bad. Eventually. I know. I mean, eventually, no. but everyone's like, what a dick he is. But he's like, hey, man, I don't care. Well, yeah. What is the still want much time. money in it. Well, I still want them to change that name. I don't want them to be forced, but I fucking hate that guy for that because he would never fucking show that and I've said it a million times but he would never fucking show those kind of balls with any other race if it was some, if a guy in the locker room said something against black people or if you heard a guy bashing Jews no, he would come right out and go oh we don't approve of but that but Jimmy I problem. also think there's a lot of had, has a lot to do with money tied I think up right in that. Too. Yeah, uh, yeah, you probably. You know right. I mean, so yeah, the I, money. I, 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 get, I get that, but and, and the court ruled against the Redskins trademark registration. No, who yesterday, right? Well, they found proof, though. They did find proof uh, that back in the tw in, when it was in, in its inception, mm. that it was still considered a slur back then, and that's why the only reason they lost it. Yeah, but there's like there's like actually three Native Americans who are offended by it. There's like fucking 500 groups that don't give a shit either the, way. They, they, That's yeah, true. A lot yeah. of the Indian groups no, have come exactly. out and said they don't give a fuck. I about think a lot it. of them don't, and some do. The first yeah. Redskin coach was a was an American Indian. Yeah, and they did it to the tribute first to him. coach. Yeah, it's the first what, coach. Was it sitting Bull was the offensive coordinator? <laughs> <laughs> and like 32 or whatever. And yeah, that was, and he, as a tribute to him, he called him the rest. Is that how it yeah, came about? that's how it came originally? about. I think if the coach had a problem, he probably would have got that. Ah, you know, could we pick a 
How about the Cosmos? I want them to keep the name. <laughs> I want them to keep the name as well. I don't give a fuck. Look, the trademark's not going to mean anything because all that it's going to do is anyone can make up a Redskin logo and do well, whatever they want with it. All the people that are Redskin fans, really Washington Redskin right. fans, are still going to buy the real shit. Daniel Snyder will just say, hey, can you just support me and buy the real right. Redskin jersey instead of a but knockoff, in the which end, I can't stop. So yeah. it's not going to affect his business But in at the all. end, he's going to lose. Cause when, I mean, the team's going to lose because when that owner you know, if it, you know, know, moves on or dies... Yeah, but he's young and rich. He's got a long way to go. A long yes. way to go, but that, that's <laughs> he's how. Not old. I know, but that's how it's going to change eventually. Oh, well, yeah, Christ sick. Are we still going to be fighting these battles thirty years from us? I don't know. How does this fucking play out, Nick? He'll eventually end. change it. Eventually, it How's will it change. What happens with this PC shit in the end? That's a very good question. Are we going to be fighting this shit thirty years from now, ten years from now, five years from now? Well, yeah. it, it, you're oh, never yeah. going to fix yeah. it. It will never turn around. It's, it's just going to keep going. It's. Uh, but it's it's a minority. Depressing. It's the. The, the, well, the it was a minority, but you have a bunch of knuckleheads that are moving into this country who b believe in this shit. I don't, I don't know anyone that's officially offended by any of this stuff. I just don't know anyone. Yeah, that doesn't mean they don't exist. Where are they though? When They're in just, L.A. But where are they when you're just walking around New York City? Where are these They're people at the that stand actually stand in the front row, giving me the finger every time I do a joke? <laughs> so you see them. So you do see some of them. Oh, fuck yeah, young kids are bought into this PC shit. Yeah. That's too bad. Fascist horse shit. That's really too bad. You're going to keep people but that's from making always... a living because you disagree with their fucking political beliefs? Isn't that the definition of fascist? Mm. That's been like that a long time, the young kids, until they get out of college and start really living. Yeah, but Jimmy, it's, it, we're taking it to a new no, level. No, it is now. at a new level. But you even know? even colleges, when we first started doing comedy back in the early 90s, they, uh, the oh, white yeah, guy well, always got in, a, it, I got in trouble. They almost didn't pay me because I said the word chick. Because I said I was sexist. Yeah, I said the word. I swear, my first college here. I ever did. How long ago was this? 92, 93. And you said 93, chicks? I said the word chick. I, said, I used to have a joke where I had long hair. I said I got pulled over on the way here. The cops like, you know why I pulled you over? I said, because I look like a chick. Right. And they, were, they held, withheld my pay a month. It was the first college I ever did. I'm going to have to look did. this up. That's hard to believe. I remember that it joke. It was one of those SUNY, <laughs> of those SUNY <laughs> schools. <laughs> what SUNY school? I went to a SUNY. One of them, uh, up, up, like Hunting? in Albany or something like that. Not up, up, a but, yeah, they held my pay back like a month ago. He was sexist. They wouldn't give it to me after the show and all this shit. So yeah. that shit's been going on a long it's time. I know. Well, yeah, but that's it. Do you understand this? This plan by the people on the left has been in progress for 50 years, and it's finally taking root now. I don't people give, are fucking comfortable with mind control, apparently. I don't give them yeah. that much credit. I think that just no one saw social media coming, and I think that people just feel like, oh, my God, this this gets me a lot of attention. I don't think anybody planned it. I don't think they're smart enough to Jimmy, plan it. Jimmy, it's been planned forever. It was new age psychology. The shit took root in fucking on the West Coast in the 50s, and it's just... It's coming to fruition, man. It's been a plan. Look at the colleges. It's fucking... It's just indoctrination for these kids, and they come out and, you know, fucking... and. <laughs> Now you got Now they're adults and they're buying into it. Unbelievable. That's what. Uh, I got to go to Eric in DC. He's saying you're wrong about the Redskins coach. Eric, go ahead. Hey guys. Hey. Um, <laughs> that, that's the story that they went with for a long time. But there's actually evidence that the guy, his name was Lone Star Deet, wasn't really a Native American. He actually went to court and lost. When he tried to prove he was a Native American, he just did it so that he could go to college for free. I think oh, that God. was Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> he was just a guy who cried around garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and I yeah. All right, well, they should do that. They should do that with Jared. <laughs> Have somebody throw a subway bag at his feet. <laughs> Picture of a little or a lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Thermos. <laughs> All right. Oh, Jared. Uh, we should take a break. We got we got the director of the Amy film coming in in about a half hour. I really wish I'd seen oh, Ryan. Huh? Oh, Amy film. Who, Judd? Oh, he's the producer. <laughs> the, who directed? Uh, I don't know who directed. Judd. The Amy Winehouse movie? Oh, I thought you said Judd directed I was thinking it. Amy's movie. You know? no, 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 this oh, is Amy Winehouse. Judd's coming in next week yeah. for Trainwreck. You see Trainwreck yet? No, I'm going uh, Tuesday night. Are you going? Yeah. I liked it. It's very good. I'm sure it's hilarious. It's very, right? very good. Judd Apatow, Apatow is coming in next week, and uh, Bill Hader as well. So, oh, good. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, but we got uh, the director of the Amy Winehouse movie. It's a great movie, man. Yeah. Did you care about Amy Winehouse at all? No, I applauded when she died. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I, you know, she was a talent. And she That's was fucking awesome, man. So I never liked her. I Did you see the movie? Right? I saw like half last night. Great, right? Her fucking when she they showed footage of her when she was fourteen, Talented. singing like so, Happy Birthday, and she was fucking awesome. Phenomenal. Right? Wait a minute, I could sing Happy Birthday. On Not like Amy. She was. <laughs> <laughs> she was fucking brilliant. 
She was brilliant. Great, great fucking great songwriter. Songwriter, yeah. And then she became a, just a parody of herself at the end of her life. It was, it's uh, um, this movie really. I bet you it's good. Really, Adele is nice, but she was much better and much more interesting to listen to. She was just great. Yeah. So we got. Uh, that was more of a. Uh, we got the director coming in in a little while. We got yeah. Florentine here. And, got, and her friend, right? The guy, the first yeah, manager? Yeah, the first manager as well. It was more of a, a De Debbie Boone fan. Debbie <laughs> Boone. <laughs> tell you something about Deb Boone. <laughs> Better pipes than people gave her credit for. <laughs> ah, she was hot. The people who are offended by the term Redskins are in the North and play lacrosse. Got offended by kids from private schools using the slurs. I don't know. I guess. Whatever. Florentine, what do you got? I saw them explain it on Donahue years ago. <laughs> that was what yeah. turned me. When I saw American Indians explaining it on Donahue many, many years ago. And they were explaining why it bothered them. And I'm like, okay. But if most of them... But it's, had... it's really a minority. Of, I was going to say... It's really a small group that are offended by I was going to say, uh, to Nick's point, if most of the Indian groups don't give a fuck, and they so don't. why should and we? From everything I've read, it's like a really small... The ones There's that... only 11 of them left, let's be honest. The, the more but, they uh... care... Like, here's why it bothers me. It's just because of the cowardice that all the these organizations show with anything that's politically incorrect. They, they never stand up for no, you're it. Right. So this is the the Indians are the only group they're comfortable in any way, shape, or form cartooning. And it's like if you're only going to pick that one group, go fuck yourself. You should lose it. Like, I, I pick every, like, like allow it to happen with every group, and don't criticize your players if they say something anti-gay right. or anti-black or anti. Then I'm with you. But I feel like they picked those names because uh, th these Indians were warriors. Well, and, it is. It's, it's done in a positive and, thing. It's yeah. not done yeah, negative. Hey, look at this red-faced guy in my helmet. Well, right. look, the, the, the Cleveland Indians logo will be gone if the Redskins go. Yeah, then the Atlanta, Atlanta Braves. Yeah, they've already done it in colleges. Every, yeah. The, the, the Sioux up in the Dakota, they had to change their name. But Chief Wahoo? I mean, like it's, it's a fucking cartoon with well, giant teeth. Why, Chief, because they well, would yell that, Wahoo? That's to your point, absolutely, where they did cartoon it. Picture but. a black face coming out every time a home run. Oh, look. It's Mr. Heebity Doobity. <laughs> yeah, good luck getting that through. Good luck with that one. Oh, look, it's Meyer, the home run Jew. Oh, <laughs> sure, that'll happen. Meyer, Stop the it. home run Jew. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's I, how fucking. Like the no what? Guy hits a home run. Yeah. You have this acidic guy sliding to a pile of money. That's how fucking. That's how ridiculous that's that where one they is. did cartoon yes. it. You're right. But the, the name came about because, you know, these. these uh, Yes, the these Braves tribes were. The Braves used to have Chief Nakahoma. Oh, we knew. We oh, remember a stupid. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you didn't uh, like that? No. Do it with an Asian group. Do it. That's all. I do it. Every time I hit the home run, it's like. <laughs> it's fucking selective. It just drives me nuts, man. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Florentine, what do you got, buddy? Uh, this weekend, Stitches Comedy Club, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and then Improv in Hollywood, California, next Thursday, July 16th, with uh, Morgan Murphy and Jason Lawhead. And, uh, oh, I got to plug this boss thing because he'll, he'll get sure. mad. He was me, in here yesterday. Why didn't he plug Because he's me, stupid. Me, Rich, and Bonnie are doing the uh, Ridgefield play. House in Ridgefield, Connecticut, August 8th. Oh, he did mention that. He did mention yes. that one, actually. But Great. he needs me to mention it or he would get mad. Yeah, all right. And then uh, it's uh, Brigada time for Jim Norton. I'm this bored weekend. with my plugs. Uh, Friday, Saturday. If you want to come, come. If not, Continue doing what you've been doing, which is not purchasing tickets. Well, they, they, they should go. It's a great time. That's ah, an average those, time. If you want to come, come. Those Borgata gigs are great. I know. I'm using reverse psychology. Oh. If you want to come. <laughs> okay, good. And then uh, New Mexico next week, and then uh, Levity Live July 23 through 25. Just go to my website. There'll be a special treat for the fans at the Borgata. Can, can, I, plug, can I plug my fucking date? It's the reason I drove in here an hour. <laughs> Hold on, fucking guy. You'll get to right. Kenny's finishing my plug. Oh, please. All right, Nick, you do your plug. Go ahead. Right, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Kenny, what's July 8th. Oh, sorry. Really? Well, now I want yeah, no, to special plug. surprise. Ahead, Kenny. No, no, no surprise. No, Nick, hey. you're the guest here. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, you're Kenny. You're the host. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I sweat this out every day. Go yeah. ahead. July 8th. I'm here every day. No, but you go ahead. You I come right in and plug. Go ahead. up to this fucking Go ahead, plug. Motherless fucks. Go ahead, plug. July 8th. Any traffic this morning? Oh, that's gonna explode. What's, who's the special guest? Say fast. No, 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 no. Come Nick on. Have the, the, no, Nick, you play. The mic. Yeah. Who's Go the ahead. special fucking guest? Fred Gwynn? The big surprise. <laughs> July 18th, the rich. podcast? <laughs> Nick's got a great podcast. He's trying yeah. to plug July 18th. I'll be in New Mexico. The, the Ridgefield Playhouse <laughs> in Connecticut by myself, not with Bonnie or fucking Rich. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, July 18th, Ridgefield Playhouse, Ridgefield, Connecticut. And, and a very good podcast, Nick DePaul. It's my favorite gig of the year. Okay. It really is a great is that a venue. Is a treehouse production? 
Uh, no, it's not a tree house. And, and promote the podcast, Nick. Uh, Come on. I forget. You forget no, it's on riotcast.com. Uh, Nick, the follow podcast. podcast. Yes. And uh, hit me up on Twitter. Yeah. I'm trying right. to break the 1500 mark. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the special guest? They, 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 no, he's got special treats. Did I oh, mention treat. him at the Ridgefield Playoffs July 18th? <laughs> it's a week from Saturday. Come yeah. on out if you want to see some angry fucking white horses. <laughs> How do they get tickets? How do they get tickets? They go to my house. My wife has a window in the kitchen. <laughs> and hand her a credit card. I don't know, Kenny. How's they go to nickdip.com. Uh, who, who's the, what's the special treat? Free T-shirts with every merchandise purchase. Oh, yeah, bringing us the, yeah. the old shirts and getting rid of them. <laughs> really? Just yeah. get rid of some old merch. So if they just buy a CD, they get a T-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Nick, you're exactly. not offering that. I don't sell T-shirts and shirts. You're not offering I any don't. of that. A vintage Jim Norton T-shirt. You need a special treat. I'm selling show. Donald Trump wigs after the show. <laughs> Uh, we're going to continue with Nick DiPaolo, and we got the uh, director of the Amy Winehouse movie coming up. Oh, in this video, by the way, the manager of Panera Bread that punched his female employee, but didn't she, at it was, they just showed it on Fox, didn't she attack him first? I don't know. Let's yeah, but that, you, you can't do anything, Jimmy. That's another new world we're living in. Apparently, a girl can take a swing at you, and uh, you just have to sit there and take it. Oh, boy, which, did he fucking belt that happened with that, uh, Yeah, with the, the football, football player. player. Yeah. yeah. Um, Why don't we uh, look at the video next? Yeah, let's see All that, because right. I, I saw it, but I didn't hear I, what was said. And I forgot to promote that Corey Taylor's going to be. In. From Slipknot at 10 o'clock. Stone Sour. I'm going to be at the uh, Ridgeville Playhouse July Yes, 18th. you are, Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> yes, you are. And the Ventura Comedy Club in L.A. on July 22nd. Nice. Okay. Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. All right. NickDip.com uh, for all your dates. One night only. All right. Still supporting yeah, Cosby. Huh? Whoopi is still supporting Cosby. Uh, we're going to talk yeah. about that. <laughs> hold it. Are you guys really fucking. <laughs> my heart's coming up into my head. Nick, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Sorry, Op. Hold it until we, we're crazy. back. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <teasing going nuts>. <laughs> <laughs> On the radio, back on the radio. That's so my welcome back to the radio. Song. I like it, Jim Norton. I yeah, love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 we got Nick DiPaolo in studio. Hi. His brain's about to explode. No. <laughs> and we got Florentine in studio, and we're going to have Corey Taylor in a little bit from Slipknot. What a day. Jesus. Yeah. And then we got the director of the Amy Winehouse movie coming in in about 10, 15 minutes. So there you have it. We got the Panero uh, punch-out video. I haven't seen this yet. They just played it on, on the TV. South Carolina House approves bill removing Confederate flag. Okay. Thanks, Kenny. That's, well, that's not how I want well. that handed to me. A banana? It's a, oh, it's warm. Who <laughs> was this? Would you have this in your coat pocket? <laughs> Fucking a warm banana. A warm you banana. better hope it was in his pocket. <laughs> it's got a lot of bruises. Are those bruises? <laughs> Why is it warm? I don't know. Why, Why is it brown? Brown? on the tip? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm kind of with you on a warm banana. I don't that's want a, a man handing me a warm banana. His big, <laughs> big so ex-cop hands. That's rough. Why is the banana a warm, uh, young go-getter? Hello, how are you? Hello, doing well. How about yourself? Good, thank you. Good. I mean, I didn't think the banana was warm, but I guess... Uh... Why'd you walk in with a limp? Yeah, exactly. You have a peach shirt and no <laughs> no fucking shoelaces. Why were you reaching in your pocket when you walked in the studio? I was handing Kenny the change. Oh, the I, thought the, I thought the banana was in there. No, 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 no. It was in my hand. Don't I'll worry. say this. A nice small banana. I like that. Not too many calories. Good choice. Thank you, Jim. Thank I'm you, glad pal. you approved. Thank you very much. Where's that accent from? Where are you from? Jersey, Jersey accent, really? Yeah. Okay. What part of Jersey? Uh, North Central, about 45 minutes west of the city. Where's oh, that? West. Uh, Warren Township. What was the name of that gig we used to do? It's driving me nuts. It, uh, Lori Levy used to book it, and I was driving through Jersey recently, and it was in West Jersey. What the fuck was the name of that? Uh, skid Marks in Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> No. Wait, it was in, like, the Scataway or something, No, right? it was uh, way out. It was, like, Bobby Levy and, and Lori Levy booked it. What the fuck was the name of that place? Bob Levy booked it? Years, dude. This is and 1992. Lori? 91, maybe. And Lori Levy taught me something on the way she was driving. And I'm like, I, I was trying to figure out how to make a crowd. She's like, well, why you don't you never smile at the audience? She's like, what do you do when you see people you yeah, like? I've never smile. heard that. But, I mean, that, this is in 91. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm. She's uh, coming up. And it helped. I don't no, smile at my bit. parents. All right, thank I don't thank remember you, the gig, though. Thanks, sir. You did it. I did it with the coach and BB Matt. Remember BB Matt? Yeah, I don't remember the gig. I just saw I just saw Levy and his son. We went to the Foo Fighters together, and uh, he's doing good. Levy's the best. Uh, best. He should be an agent. Any time I did gigs with him, I got paid more. Oh, oh really? Oh yeah, cash and yeah. He's, he's, How does he get that done? He he's threatens the guy with yeah. violence. Uh, you think he strong arms these oh, people yeah. in the back yeah. room? There's been uh, right? like three different gigs. They go. Last time Bob Levy was here, he threw a chair at me. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's the, true. Yeah, that's the matter. That yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they rebook him. <laughs> yeah, so that's Every, pretty amazing. You, you guy had fresh stitches on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Levy's my agent. <laughs> uh, Panera. 
uh, punch out. This is a big video on the old uh, YouTube. Uh, Nick, you need to see this, right? You know, we well, got to figure out how to put this shit on the, on the TV. <laughs> 19 TV. We got a million TVs, so somehow we got to put the YouTube on the TV, and then that'll, that'll solve the problem. So Nick DePaul could see this as well. <laughs> this is, uh, I guess, this is the viral video today, huh? Yep. All right, here it is. Is there a way? How did you not know she's not coming to the other door? She's walking. Up. Welcome to America. All right. Hold on wow. a second. Wow. It's sad. another Democratic voter. They were arguing and did did fucking he like she it seemed like she hit him and then was turned around. Yeah. Who, who threw the first I, I thought like she, she did. But I thought she Ladies, did. Ladies, you gotta learn. But then you hear something and I don't know if he did or not. He might have early in this video. Because he, he hit her from behind. Well, that, that's exactly right. When you see stuff like this... You don't know what happens he, before he, the camera I wanna turned see the, on. I want to see a half hour before the actual yeah. incident and a half hour. Because you, you always turn your camera on after you've seen a whole bunch of shit. She could have yeah. a couple of pickles shit. at him. You don't know. You never get this stuff from the beginning. <laughs> you, you, you never do. So she's an employee and he was the manager. Yeah, she was quitting. Apparently. She was quitting. And I guess he fired her, we could say. She was quitting in the middle of her shift. She was quitting in the middle of, it, of her shift. And she left. Yeah, and then she came back. Welcome to America, 2015. I think the video description talks about uh, what was going on before. <laughs> what was going on before, Travis? Yeah, let's read this. Panera. Uh, she was throwing shit. She was causing a big. Scene. Oh, hold on. Ba 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 ba. He wants a sandwich. She's having a heavy day. He wants a sandwich. The bread stale. She throws a racial epithet. She quit mid shift. Just wasn't having it today. Threw some bag of chips on the floor. Yelled. Blah, blah, blah. Like Jimmy would say, manager in white shirt basically threw her out the door. She came back, and then da, da, da. But they were arguing, but did he? Because he was a bigger guy. Like That was Jason Pierre Paul, wasn't it? Because <laughs> he bit his finger off. The Giants let him go, and I was working up at it. <laughs> did you see Jimmy saw the picture of his hand. I heard. I can't Holy wait to see. I wish it was uh, Eli Manning. <laughs> <laughs> that would affect <laughs> One finger is definitely gone, and he's, the picture Jimmy saw, he said is he's missing a face at defensive is a player. Mess. I know. I heard Jimmy saying how uh, it's like thirty-five percent of his strength. If that's what they say. Yeah, and he, middle finger. He's, he's an amazing make, player. He's going to make fifteen million. He was. He'll be fine. These guys. He's so athletic. That guy. You think so? Put a fake. Put a hook on him like they do a military yeah, guy. Yeah, no finger, just a hook. Yeah, head. <laughs> <laughs> See him tackle the guy with that metal hook. I stick it right in the back of the guy's neck. Pull so him out of a... What are we doing with this video? Whatever. I want to see it again. You do? Yeah, okay. yeah. Was, yeah, you're watching. All right. So she the... quit mid shift. She came back into Panera. yelling and causing in, a ruckus. In the story, it says that uh, he pushed her down a flight of stairs before this video. See, that's what I'm maybe saying. Got you her get maybe got her pregnant. Exact, that's why she came around to the other entrance. Yeah. No, no, no. He was trying to help her out of the club because she was yelling, I'm fucking Nikki Santoro. And he was trying to walk her down the steps. And then the manager sat there and he's like, I really fucked yes. up with this. I really fucked up this yeah. time, Mikey. Yeah, she asked for a flatbread sandwich. <laughs> yes. So then the video Tell her about milk-fed veal. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I get the pink stuff. Phenomenal head right uh, into the cock. Right. That's how my father used to slap me, though, wind up from his asshole. Oh, as long as that's not what he did to you in the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, let's see this again. <laughs> Slide over. Uh, he says you're nuts for coming in the other door. All right. She said you put your hands on me, and then she slapped him. She slapped him. No, I but think. she. Oh. What do you have in your? That's it, an open hand slap. Maybe yeah. But looked, what do you have in his hand? It looked like he I hit think her with a stale pocket piece. Book. Stale piece of bread, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, she said to him, "You put your hands on me. You put your hand." Yeah. I think that he fucked up and pushed her out. That you can't. I, it sounds to me like he fucking walked her down the steps. Whatever. Well, could, supposedly he threw her down the steps yeah, or something, right? Yeah. Or forced her down the Maybe steps. Maybe I'm nicing it up. But that's what it sounds like. She's saying, put your hands on me. Then she came back to fuck Well, her. that guy's fucked, huh? He <laughs> may have pushed her out the door, and then she walked right back in. Yeah. Not a big fan of Panera, anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's... Way better than Subway. $11 for a sandwich. Get the fuck out of here. They just hit the employees. They don't fuck the kids of them. <laughs> <laughs> Panera's What's worse today? I think it's worse to fucking hit a woman... <laughs> 
Oh, God. So uh, He wound up, didn't is, he? Is he fired? From the back, dude. Like, he, she was turned around. And that was he a wind hit up. Her. Yeah, that was a bad one. That yeah, was, was a bad one. I think the hand flat. was open, though. Maybe. He hit her with a bag, though, whatever the hell he had Oh, yeah, something in his hand? Yeah, yeah I, I don't can't know what it see. is. I'm looking to... It looks like it might be a rag or something. One more time through. I Just think it's a piece of Sicilian <laughs> from the beginning. What's up? He's holding a bag of something. Yes, he didn't even hit her with his hand. It he could got, be a hat. I think it, it might like be a hat. hat. But, oh, he, but he went for her a, head went right into this fucking like post. But he yeah, went for a punch. He's used to that. He went for a punch at first. Oh, I think he's holding the Panera hat. That was a pretty. That oh, was that's a, a hat. Yeah. Probably the hat you got to wear when you're making the sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Did he hit her? Oh, oh no. no. Why don't you hit her with a name tag? Really disgraceful. Well, Jesus, this, this, is, this is the Godfather. If it was filmed outside of Burger King, yeah. he would have beaten Carlo with the fucking Burger King hat. <laughs> <laughs> How much could that so hurt? Trash that's, but that's what makes it humiliating that you're getting, uh, you know, hit with the the, the sandwich hat. Yeah. Okay. How, you get, he's got a choker with a hair net, <laughs> right? Could that really hurt getting hit by a hat? Is oh, I don't know. Down, he though. got there was more than just hat, man. I, I mean, think yeah. the, I think the hat was wrapped around my hand. That was he wrapped around it. Wrap it. How many times I gotta tell you? Mm. Not too many more. <laughs> yeah, it's a hat maybe, crime, right? Yeah. Can you can you go back? Yeah, it's a hat, hat crime. crime. <laughs> maybe, maybe her maybe her weave was still stuck in it. <laughs> he, he, he throws a punch too, or tries. Yeah, he threw a punch. Yeah, but what was that loud crack? Punch. Was that her landing on the steps? She him, but I think when she when if the description says he physically threw her down the steps and got her out when she comes back in she's going you put your hands on me like again I, that's why these things are dangerous especially when it, it involves cops and stuff you always catch the last two minutes you know yeah. what preceded that or but, precipitated the incident and you're gonna go you really kind of justify yes i am that yeah. sounds to me like he hit her first though well, he's probably she wants she quits, throw and causing a it's, scene. He probably just said, "Look, you got to get out." Kind of push her. So he's kind of like right. pushing her down the stairs, right. like you got to go, yeah, you got to go, you got to go. Forty flights, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. she came in another entrance, yeah, and that's he, when he was like, "You're coming in." He was surprised that she came back. Yeah, because he was yelling, "I right, have a safe trip home. You know, I'm safe." <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> Nick, Be careful. Geez, I really fucked up with this broad. I shouldn't have fired her mid ship, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, is that quick? Uh, we, we discussed, you know, women. What do you do? Well, because we were all brought up, you, you don't hit a woman, and, but the women know that, and then they they, they take, they take liberties. Liber they take liberties with that. Oh. They know they could they could get a free shot in okay. because we were brought up not no, to right. back. The feminists, there was always. So what do you do? Look, there's a whole thing that you know they can do anything. We can do. The only thing, the only line that was we were physically stronger. That that was always there. Even feminists would agree to that. Now now that's even gone. They think physically they they're your equal. So, they'll, they'll throw a punch at you. I was at Gotham, and a fight broke out in, in the audience, and, and, and there's women throwing haymakers at the doorman. Wow. And, and one of the doormen just laid this woman out. He did. Oh, did he ever. But when, when did this... I mean, they really think that they can get involved physically... They, they've taken this to a new level. But they're, I, they're brainwashed. But I think they know. They, Some of them can. I mean, Ronda Rousey, you're gonna fucking think oh, twice man, about hitting her. Can you imagine? But, but but they do. I think they do it because they know we're we're not supposed to hit back. That's yeah. part of it. But <laughs> oh, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget we're on a plane. Me, Stutter, and John, and Nick, and this <laughs> woman smiling. This kid, be good. <laughs> this, <laughs> this woman was trying to get her bag in the overhead, and she asked John. She goes, "Can you help me?" And Nick goes, "Don't help her. They fought for that right." <laughs> 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 no, I said they fought for that freedom. Let them enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> really? And I, I still yeah. help one all the time. But I let him struggle for like five minutes. He did, he did. And then I see blood coming out of their eyes. I go, want me to get in there? <laughs> I knew that wasn't going to be a nice story with your smile <laughs> for it. <laughs> What's gonna be it was one of the greatest lines I've ever heard. Over. I'm usually pretty nice on a plane. You have to be. But, there, was uh, one, there was that one video, too, that guy on the train. But he, the, he had no charges filed against him because the video showed the whole thing of those women hitting him. The guy with the awful eight-ball jacket. You've and seen this one, right, Nick? Fucking belted her, but Long he was time justified. Ago, right? Yeah, he was. It was probably six months. His, his fist came from another. But fucking she was time hitting him with a zone. purse with shit in it, and shit. he was a hundred percent justified laying her what out. What color was that guy? They're both, I think, black or Spanish or yeah. whatever. But again, it was a hundred percent. You've justified. never seen this one? It's what I, I, I think I did. did. This was the eight ball jacket. We got to play this one more time. This was. Oh yeah, I did see this. They're, they're arguing. Yeah. 
He's just looking at her. You petty as hell. <laughs> She's taking shots at the camera guy. Some rough slaps. I don't do it when you get mad. You sound stupid. And then she starts hitting him. Oh, oh he slapped her. <laughs> I thought it was an open hand. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then it gets ugly. Yeah. Wow. He really lays down a fucking... That slap was wonderful. That was one of the greatest slaps ever. Boy, this guy is taking care of business. And then he's taking care of the whole fucking train. Yeah, you fucked my wife. Yeah. Is this uh, America? Seriously. This is New York? It. This is about a, great, a year old. This uh, yeah, about, about ten seconds back, you see a white guy just run out of the seat. Yeah, we, he's like, I gotta get you the fuck out I of here. Too. I love when he. Go, I love when he. Uh, she uh, hits the phone guy's phone, and yeah. there's a probably a black guy holding the phone. He goes, "You damn, you petty." Yeah. <laughs> we called her petty. We dissected every second of this video about a year ago. You dirty bitch, you dirty bitch. <laughs> and the white guy running past the camera. Guy. <laughs> yeah. he got that game. He looked like Spike <laughs> Ferriston. He's like, "Let me get the fuck out of here." But she, uh, she was throwing laughs. She was th throwing those left slaps. She was awful. Yeah. She was fucking awful. And, yeah, she was awful. But the anyway, guy probably was a little slow, or his voice is at least a little fucked up. And eight ball jacket guy never got anything from. No, that. he shouldn't yeah, have. He, yeah. yeah, he was fine in the end. Good. But uh, I would have given his own series yeah, on the that, WB. That was a mess. Yeah, wear that jacket everywhere, and we'll film what happens. <laughs> that was the writers' room. <laughs> the but making fun of his eight ball jacket. That Mike Lawrence show. from the 1990s. <laughs> yeah, 1980. I, I, I don't go for the eight ball jacket slap? shaming. Oh, no. they, literally. It's not like the Three Stooges. <laughs> what the fucking mo? He went, He almost like put his hand on the floor before he. Fucking and he was swung. about six eight, so that was coming from oh, fucking fuck. yeah. Pennsylvania. That slap. That was a wonderful slap. It's like a Randy uh, Johnson was a little fastball. Mouthy. That fucking slap. It Holy was beautiful. shit! I had no problem with that. I got to be honest with you. We got the uh, the Amy Winehouse guy yet? Nope. Not okay. Yet. Where is he? Oh, what time is he scheduled for? He's ready. He's ready. No. Which is fine. He's doing the J.J. Walker show. Mm. That means we got time to give Nick DiPaolo a plug. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> July 18th, the Richfield Playhouse. Um, it's a Saturday night. It's a week from this Saturday night. In Connecticut. In Connecticut. In Connecticut. And you're going to be there, too, right? August 8th. August 8th. Have you been there? No, I haven't been there. What a venue. It's my favorite. Really? Oh, it's beautiful. One of those old theaters. And... What do you uh, What do you think of the Whoopi? The Whoopi Goldberg. I is, think she uh... defends people, black people, blindly, and she's uh, a I, fucking idiot. She I, always has been an idiot. She's not funny. She's not attractive, and uh, she got a free pass. Wait, wait, I got to go in. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think she does uh, defend. Of course, she does. blindly. So this this Cosby's uh, wow. Now, now all hell's gonna break loose. I think, right now. The that, bottom line, people, now that, that that came out, they'll still go out to see him. People, people will. People go out because you know, if you're on TV enough, they'll come out to see you. People who committed to defending him now, it's like there's got to be a time where you just go, all right, I'm fucking wrong. Yeah. You, but no, nobody no, wants but to admit they're wrong. Skin nobody. color gets involved in ideology, and yeah. uh, I got to defend my team. That's the fucking. Nobody point. wants to admit they're wrong. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. like the bottom line is you defending the guy. I, at first, I got it. Innocent of proven guilty, but how much circumstantial evidence do you need? Did she say something else yesterday? She did. So she, she did. Last... Yeah, she dug her heels in even more. Again? Yeah. Did yeah. yeah. I hear That's this? I haven't heard Imagine that if she was white and defending a white. She'd been kicked off the show. I can't take the fucking double standards anymore. You know, uh, yesterday we talked about Cosby, and I said what I've always said. Innocence of proven guilty in the United States of America, because that's our law. Uh, so people have been coming after me and saying they're going to snatch my family. They're going to come. And it's like being Frankenstein. People coming after you with the fire and they're going to burn you. Well, here's the deal. This is the view. And that was my opinion. And not any of you threatening me or telling me you're coming after because you don't like what I said is going to change the fact that no one has convicted him, he has not been arrested, and the bottom line is that's the law, innocent until proven guilty. And if you're the mother of a son, if you're the mother of a son who gets accused, you want to keep 
innocent until proven guilty. Just ask. Just Round of applause from the douchebag White House well, wives. So far, so far, she's right. I mean, it's like, all right, Angela proven guilty, but we all yeah. know he oh, did. Yeah, I'm, yeah sure she would, I'm sure she would have <laughs> taken that stance on Jeffrey Dahmer or fucking Tim McVeigh. I'm sure she would have been like, wait till we convict him. Donald Trump. Trump. Probably not. Fucking Trump. Trump. Exactly. Well, well you know, the, but boys. that said, she's still technically so far. Sure. She's okay. Sure. Have the Duke lacrosse team. Remember that? We raked them across the, the yeah, you did. burned them at the stake, took away every opportunity they had at school, they were done. And it turns out it wasn't true. Can we pause this? Yeah. This is where her logic is flawed. What, was she saying that then? About that, the, that, first of all, that was one woman accusing three people as opposed to, uh, I think now it's up to 1,400, uh, <laughs> accusing <laughs> one person. Yeah. The whole state There's of There's a Iowa. big difference. Yeah. And there was fucking process, the prosecutorial at Nifong, Dennis Nifong, was, was fucking proven misconduct. I would love for this to go to court and the victims, they had to pull up in a Greyhound bus. There's like 170 of them. <laughs> You got a fucking trailer behind that with another 300 girls. Like, yeah, there's a holding area for the victims. Yeah. It's like fucking like extras, extras, like extras, 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 extras on a movie set. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, only, only the most recent victims get the trailers. The other ones get honey wagons on the side. <laughs> yeah, Janice Dickinson gets a trailer. <laughs> wow. Continue with that. It wasn't true. So I think we all at UVA, same thing. We all have. A very important role to play when it comes to abuse and rape. We all have to demand that if it's true, the person is taken to the nth degree of the world and punished. No one here thinks rape is good. No one here thinks rapists are fun. Yeah, Nobody here does. thinks rape or hates women or any of that. So don't come after me like that because I'm sick of this bull. Here's the bottom line for me. It's my opinion. And the American courts agree with me because still, he has not been taken to jail or tried or on anything. So back off me. Jeez. Yeah, well, look, this, the statute of limitations. Have, douche, I can't stand The wow. statute of limitations have run out. That's why yeah, he hasn't been court arrested. Yeah. Shows that too. And Bill Cosby and again, uh, or his people tweeted to Whoopi, thanks, Whoopi, on the old Twitter. So of they did. You think he'd stay off Twitter? You know, you think that uh, you'd avoid Twitter. Now he's going to plug his dates. <laughs> yeah. His dates are all And I mean that literally. <laughs> <laughs> After he knocks him out. Oh, what a crazy... Would you rather a woman be, some drowsy, be awake or sleep when you're banging a neck? Uh, depends who the woman is. If she apps a lot, oh, just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> could she's you get a talker. Done, you think you could get it done quicker if she's asleep? Uh, if she's asleep? Yeah. Or would you last longer if she was awake? What a, what a <laughs> creepy question. But you, but you feel so creepy. He's known for this. But just, I know. Of these creepy questions. <laughs> I know. Jimmy <laughs> scares the hell out of me. Touching someone in their sleep is just creepy, I've man. I've never done that. Fucking yeah. gross. Like, how I've the never fuck do you keep that. a heart on while I someone's sleeping? Yeah, that's not right. Fucking I, awful. I make sure they're awake. Yeah, I mean, that's the I basic get, thing. I give, and I do that by giving them coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least, at least give them back to the room. <laughs> yeah. I like when a girl falls asleep while I'm fucking, and that's always because my performance is boring. <laughs> yeah. well, you you never... fell asleep during my show, now you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> but you were never, like, spooning man. with a girl and rubbed your dick on her ass while she was sleeping the, the, the to maybe get something going? You know, the difference between that, like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> just, yeah, oh, my, like, no my sister on that. Thanksgiving. <laughs> that, that's not bad. Yeah, you if you're with somebody and you just, you know... But that's not somebody I would manipulate and drug and fucking have her doze off and then put my dumb dick in her and then pull her pants up all askew. <laughs> We've all pulled out the feeler where you give it a shot. You yeah. Know, and you give a little rub to see if there's any uh, I mean, you got anything going on. Yeah, she starts rubbing back. And then if she, yeah, if she bumps back, then you know you're good to you go. You like bang chicks that, that are that asleep. Part, dude. That's a fine line between that and necrophilia. That's fucking that's just right. predator shit, man. You might as well be fucking a dead bro. That's what's really creepy about it. He, wa he needed them or wanted them to be really drowsy, if not completely out. Oh, I'm surprised he wasn't at cemeteries with a shovel. It, you know? That one really is, is one step above that. And, and, he, and it he, is, right? Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he, about, he was using Benadryl as well as Quaaludes. That, like, he even he was thinking, ah, the Quaaludes aren't good enough. I'm going to give him Benadryl as well on top of it. Yeah, there was some maybe, nice it had, maybe it had allergies, some of those girls. <laughs> maybe. You don't know. <laughs> so maybe he didn't last long. He didn't want that getting out there. Maybe right. he was, like, too pumpy. Maybe he's, <laughs> he's like, I don't dick. want some chick going to inquire. He's a tiny dick right. for a black guy. We yeah. don't know. His fucking wife, too. I've had enough of fucking Camille not saying anything. Oh, fuck. 
fucking silent partner no, just standing exactly. there. Exactly. Oh, no, I uh, Thank you, Mrs. Sandusky. You yeah, were, exactly. The same right? one, that dopey dotty. You gotta assume they <laughs> fucking screams coming from the basement. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought they were yawning and laughing. Right. <laughs> They're in agreement. You gotta assume they just had an agreement. Agree unspoken. Come on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's a devil. Probably too. not even unspoken. Like she probably liked the lifestyle and said, All right, you do what it's you It's in writing. Do. I mean, come on. She had to know something. It's, yeah. I mean, stop. You, well, you just know. Stop like, when you're with somebody, you just know. And he probably never said, I'm going to fuck girls. She probably just went, okay. Like, it's just one of those things that goes without saying. Like, I'm surprised it went on this long. If four of them woke up with a pudding pop hanging out of their ass. <laughs> come on. How do you not put the connect the dots? Uh, what a creep this guy is, man. Just fucking... Never liked his comedy, never liked him. I respected him as a comedian, uh, I but I never, I never liked him. <laughs> you, you, don't like, you don't like him as a stand-up? Nope. I Chris, when I worked for Chris Rock, the whole show went to see him. I didn't go. I saw oh, really? him once. Yeah. I, I, I was impressed. I saw him once. Well, here's what impressed me. With the way he, again, he's Cosby. He can do it. But the way he came out and just, did no introduction. He just walks out, sits down, and he starts just launching into it. You know it's a new bit. And to watch him kind of working through it and conceptualizing it and seeing where he can. I was like, you he know. He just walked out. There was no MC in the middle of that. Yeah, you know, it's like. I mean, again, and he's, he is who he is, so he could do it. But my girlfriend and I went back and talked to him. Oh. And I've told this story before. What happened? He was odd. And I, I, I remember this at the time, not just because the story came out, but uh, we took photos. I have a photo with him, so I wanted to get it signed. And, they, and I'm like, can my girlfriend take a picture with you? And he goes, well, only if she's my girlfriend. I'm like, um, okay. He goes, she's got to be my girlfriend. I'm like, all right, oh, fine. That's and then she sat next to weird. Again, but that's as far as it went. Nothing else happened. Well, yeah. that, you stuck, were there. that stuck out for me. Even after, I was like, what a weird thing to say, even joking. Like, I didn't feel menaced by it, but I was like, it was fucking odd. Yeah. Wow. If you went out for a sandwich. I was starstruck. Me, Billy Burr, and Jim Norton got to meet him. Did you? We just wanted a picture. We were in the middle of uh, doing a radio show, and, and he he forces you to sit down with him and have a like a conversation before he'll take the picture. We were, But I, we thought it was cool at the time, remember? Yeah, I was mean? fine with it. I mean, we were all on a couch with Bill Cosby just shooting the shit, and then, he, then when he was good and ready, he finally took the photo. Yeah. And then uh, there was I stayed in the dressing room, and I came out uncomfortable an hour later. <laughs> we got the the director of the Emmy one. Yes, bring him in. That was very good. Yes, it was. Uh, boy, I'm going to mispronounce this one. Oh, no, boy. you'll get it. Have faith in yourself. Uh, Kevin Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Asif <laughs> Kapadia. Asif Kapadia. I'm going to go with that. Is that it? No, it's Asif. How did he say it? That's good. Asif. Yes. Okay. Anyway, there's, there's no wrong. Okay. Hello. I say Asif. Asif. Asif Kapadia. We're on the radio. Oh, can you, can someone hold this? And Nick. Holy shit. I didn't know Nick was coming in. You yeah. can stand or sit. Oh, no. What's going on? You were... Uh, uh, a childhood friend of Amy Winehouse. And her manager. And her manager. Hold on, we're going to get yeah. you a mic there. I was a child of hers. I was 19. She was 16. Well, that's kind of yeah, so. All right, all right. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you that as a child. You want to stand? Yeah. You sure? Cool. Why? I used to stand on radio. I get it. Sometimes. It's, it's a new smoke. Huh? <laughs> Wait, I got a hemorrhoids. It's the new smoking <laughs> sitting, right? Yeah. Sitting is the new smoking. Yeah, the most unhealthy thing. Tell the Stephen Hawking will be dead in three weeks. <laughs> so you don't Twelve pack a day, guy. You don't sit much. No, I do. That's the reason why I'm standing. Oh, okay. I'm, right. I'm in cars. And... Well, I uh, we, we saw the Amy Winehouse movie. I fucking loved it. I, I got to say that right off the bat. I had no idea how how talented she really, really was. And the, yeah. And you guys are showing that through the film. Obviously, she was uh, she was brilliant, brilliant songwriter, brilliant uh, performer. How'd you get right to all the footage? Like, was there anybody that that held up the footage? Because the stuff that they showed, it was like, wow, it's not the person who I thought she was. Right. It took a long time. It took three years to make. So the process really to start with was to talk to people, do interviews, a bit like what we do now, audio interviews. And once I built up the trust with each contributor, then they said, well, actually, I've got some photographs, I've got video, I've got a diary page, I've got letters or answer phone messages. All of, them, all of the material came afterwards. A lot of great live footage, too. And I like that you put the work. Sometimes she was hard to understand, cause she, but you put the lyrics, which I just thought made it so interesting to watch, and you could follow it. And it was all footage I'd never seen before. Yeah, because everyone talks about the voice, but the writing is amazing, you know, and it's all personal. That's the thing. So we really wanted to highlight how incredible she was at writing yeah. and how she made everything personal and how she put humor in there and a twist and a reference 
references, you know, um, that's the bit no one talks about. I think that's the hardest thing, writing something original and based on a personal experience that stands the test of time. I think that's the most difficult thing ever. Yeah, I mean, Rehab, you know, that was an experience she had, and she turned it into a song. It was almost word for word what happened to her at that time where all you guys got together to get her into rehab, the father was in on it, and then last minute basically said, Amy doesn't need rehab, and then she turned around and made, a, you know, her biggest song out of that whole experience. What yeah. were you thinking when her father said that she didn't, she didn't need to go? Um, well, it was very frustrating because she clearly needed to go. And, you know, um, I checked in with him and he said that he agreed with me. And I don't know what happened. We, we got there, we met up with him, and then he changed his mind. Why and did he change his mind? I don't know. He, 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 at the time, he thought that maybe I was overreacting. He thought that, you know, he put it down to her having a broken heart. Uh, being young and trying things, uh, but it was it, it was clearly to me it was clearly more than that. It wasn't like someone just trying out drugs or being a bit heartbroken. Um, so it was frustrating. I mean, I I I was very young at the time, and you know, who knows how a father sees it when someone shows up and says their daughter needs help. Right, can't be an easy thing to hear that, but. Um, but I think it was it was a t an important time to try and get her on the straight and narrow. Yeah. How did you meet her? How did I meet her? I was 19. I was doing all the mundane, boring jobs in the music business. I realised that um, I had to try and find some talent to be taken seriously. I started managing this guy called Tyler James, who went to school with her. And he, he just... We got into a chat one day and he just said, I've got a friend who's amazing, but she's not applying herself to music. And um, I really think she should be. Give her a call. Uh, so I hadn't heard a voice. I called her, and we just had a really funny conversation. Um, no, he's trying to turn the microphone. Oh, I've got you. Yeah, we're but trying to help you out. This piece of shit equipment keeps getting stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like a, it's like a limp dick. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, What's wrong with that? Like yeah. walking out, sounds like he's walking out of the hall with you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to get your mic better there, Nick. Yeah, we're trying to make it It's a bit. candy product. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky this isn't live. It is live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, he's kidding. Well, was, <laughs> How did, literal open. <laughs> so she, ne oh, no. so she never went to rehab. Ever? I didn't see the documentary yet. <laughs> she, she did. She, apparently, she, you know, she did go to defensive. It is live. She did. She yeah, did go to rehab. <laughs> but, you know, again, rehab, like, you get the rehab that's the um, glorified hotel room with, like, a nurse, or you get the serious rehab where it's rehabilitation and it's over a long period of time. Mm. I don't know exactly where she went, but um, I remember a few times thinking, that's not a great place to be. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though, you had this impression of Amy Winehouse, as someone who never met her, they, they made like a, a parody of her, or, or made her look like a, a drunken clown all the time, and the footage shows such a different side of her. I was like, right. it was kind of nice to see, because I never had an impression of her that she was the person that they show in this documentary. You get the full picture. Yeah. That's the, the main aim of the film, yeah. was to kind of address the balance. It felt, it all became so negative. If you Googled her name, all you saw were horrible images right. of her, horrible performances. She was an amazing artist, first and foremost. She had issues, we all have issues, you know, and they came to the fore when the fame came along, when the money came along, when certain people became part of her circle. But actually, she was amazing. She was really cool, really great, really funny, really intelligent. Do you think um, Blake was bad for her or good for her? That was her husband. Yeah, he was a he was another lost young kid. You know, if you if you go around Camden in two thousand and four, two thousand and five, there was loads of kids that were lost and you know looking for something. So I don't. Yeah. I think I think we've got to be careful. We don't. You know, he clearly wasn't a good influence on Amy, and probably was a bad influence. But I think we've got to be careful not to like blame and like you know he was a lost kid at the end of the day. Um, there's lots of lost kids in and around kind yeah. of cities and particularly the more bohemian music part of the cities, right. which, which is what Camden, London is, you know? And she was the first victim of uh, the new media. When, you know, a celebrity, we were saying this last night when we were talking about the movie, when, you know, a celebrity fucked up and you had some footage of it, you had to try to get it on one of these entertainment shows, but then Amy Winehouse might be the first where she fucked up and boom, right to YouTube and everywhere else yeah. and... And it's, it's, she was a girl with the problems with the song Rehab. Right. 
and then social media, and also the newspapers in the UK, that's just when they went digital. Yeah. So suddenly they need more and more content. They've got websites they've got to fill. You yeah. Know, they've got daily editions that have been mm -hmm. updated online. And she, unfortunately, she kept providing them with material. Right. And rehab was her biggest hit, but it was, it was also kind of like an albatross for her, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, th she almost wasn't taken seriously because of that song. Yeah, it's a song that made her well-known here because that was the soundtrack for all of other artists here, like Britney or Lindsay Lohan or whoever else was having problems. That became the song that people would put underneath a clip. Right. Before people knew who were singing it, they knew the track. Right. Um, and, you know, people were dancing along to it, but actually when she came along, suddenly it was like, perfect, what a match for that song. You know, she's sitting with a, almost like a, a huge pint of wine on the stage singing this song about rehab. How ironic. But actually, you know, she needed help. Yeah, you got footage in the movie of her just uh, having that complete meltdown on on stage which Horrible. is unbelievable footage and that was pretty much the beginning of the the true end right how, how long was that before she ended up uh dying well unfortunately i think i think it all started to really unravel for her personally in 2005 she died 2011 uh, i think it got worse and worse the fame came like a huge tidal wave um and then she just got worse and worse it wasn't like it was like a six month thing right. of like going into downward spiral sure. quite a long drawn out time of being in a bad place yeah you know um and 2005 was just before that like i said that tidal wave of fame hit her and i think once that happens it's very hard to like well, cut through and get well, that well the yeah. footage i'm talking about from the movie what year was that oh um 2011 2011 that's about um six weeks a month before she died yeah, okay Serbia. and was, was uh, that her last show yeah. was it yeah. That was they have footage of her last show where she uh, goes on stage and she does not perform. She, she doesn't even really know what the fuck she's doing or why she's on stage. Did they boo her? It was so yeah. uncomfortable. I think I've watch. seen that. Yeah, I think I've seen that. But uh, you you explain in the film that she was in no shape to even go on tour, and they pretty is it really true? They just woke her up and threw her on a plane, and she was like pretty much out of it and still asleep because they just kind of wanted to keep that gravy train going. This is the uncomfortable thing. This is what people around in the circle were saying. That unfortunately, those sorts of stories are kind of typical rock and roll. You never know, right. laughs about it. Management laugh about the fact, oh, this artist was so messed up, and we got him on stage, and they got him out, and yeah. you know, we spent oh, great. That's all like something people enjoy and they talk about afterwards. Um, sadly, it becomes normal in the industry, yeah. and that's the problem. Everyone's everyone's got a tale like that about some some band or some artist, and the problem is when someone dies, then they go, oh, maybe that wasn't a good thing. But actually, if they don't die, then machine keeps rolling on sure and uh mitchell the the father he's uh he's not happy with this film in general right but but it, it came out that he wants people to see it but could you explain that um he's I, talking i think it's i think it's very sensitive again it's her dad she loved him he loved her um i think some bad judgment calls were made through amy's life which you know I think I think what's powerful about the film is is actually you're you're watching Amy through these different phases of her career and life, and hope you know you're seeing various relationships unfold and and but but actually the film doesn't point fingers at people because it's very complex it's very hard to you know apparently he's not happy with the film you can see why he's not happy with the film but at the same time it's very you know what father ever wants to be critiqued or looked at or you know um but i think mistakes were made that that, that really didn't help amy yeah, she yeah. wanted you to i'm oh, sorry but she wanted you to manage her and you didn't want to do it because it was such a you saw this it was getting bad well you know i was i was at a point with it where i'd made such statements and me and her two best friends that had been there from childhood um you know we'd, we'd made such we, we'd sort of put our position so clearly to her i felt felt very shallow to then say but i'll manage you but i'll take the calls i'll book the gigs yeah. so i had to make this i had to take a stance and and back up what i was saying thinking naively that this would take about three or four weeks until she's right back in the palm of my hands and then i get her into rehab put everything on hold and then we can crack on with things later on big mistake because there's always someone around the corner willing to jump in and and kind of sideline you um that was part of my naivety and youth um but again i had to stand for what i felt was right otherwise then what i just have to watch it all unravel yeah were you on the road with her as a manager and when she was doing gigs yeah were the things that you had to do to keep you know the booze or some spin no, people I mean, away from her and all that stuff well you know 
Uh, no, I mean, the early days, she really didn't experiment with heavy drugs. Um, so there weren't, there weren't any issues, really. She used to like a drink, but you know what? At that age, everyone likes to drink. It didn't really stand out as a, as a problem. It was more like a couple of drinks after a show, maybe one before a gig. Um, but hindsight, maybe, maybe that was early signs of things starting to go a bit wrong. But that first tour around that first record was a lot of fun. It was, th- it wasn't intense because she wasn't famous. She was getting a lot of critical acclaim. People were showing up to the shows. But there weren't paparazzi. She wasn't in the papers every day. And she wasn't making a fortune. So th- the pressures were much lower. Um, so I remember them as happy occasions. And that's why in the film I think people find that's, that, that particular time interesting <clears throat> because there's a lot of good spirit and happiness and, and, and youthful kind of, um, you know, happy times, I guess, in that side of the film. And a good sense of humour as well. Ooh, very funny. Uh, you get to hang out with Amy. That's what's in, what I like about that sequence is that you see you're in the car with her, you're in the restroom and she's doing a makeup. You know, where all bands start off kind of like just getting a car, going down the freeway, going to the next show. She just picks up a guitar. I don't even know she played the guitar so brilliantly. And the next minute she just stands up and starts singing. And she blows you away. Yeah. And then she's messing around with her friends again. Yeah. And it's just like really amazing to see someone who becomes so famous but be that intimate and friendly with them and see the real personality. She's shooting pool. You know, it's just really simple, ordinary, everyday things that teenagers would do. Right. But she had the voice and the talent and the songs and the writing to go with it. Yeah, there's a lot of footage of you and her like just like playing there's playing pool where she's filming you i think and you're filming her it's just silly stuff that people do and they're friends but it's really it's great footage man it's really interesting conversations and just to because i never saw her do any of that stuff or, or that or I think anyone that did that's yeah. the thing no one's seen no i had no idea i thought she was just a goof that, I mean, when i saw that i, I almost thought she was like, we had a film yeah, yeah i thought she was just a one hit wonder that was just yeah. uh that's, Sadly, that's a complete thought. and utter disaster her entire life, and you realize, whoa, no. You just slowly watch her deteriorate during this yeah. film. Yeah. And, and the thing so... is, we all thought that. People in the U.S. particularly came in quite late on the story, because you don't know the first album, Frank. Whereas right. in the U.K., we knew of her around that time. And so, you know, the word that kept coming up with people that I spoke to when I was interviewed them was that she was a train wreck. That was it. Sum yeah. her up with one word. You know, and there's so much more. And that's the problem. We all somehow fall for this image. Whether we read those kind of this type of press at all, somehow it seeps in. Somehow mm-hmm. That's how we form a judgment on people. And these are young people who are then seeing that and reading that about themselves. And it makes them even darker into the depression. It makes them self-medicate more. Right. So part of the film's aim, I guess, is to show how brilliant she was, how funny she was, to show that journey that she goes through very quickly, but also to make us think a bit about how complicit we were to kind of judge someone like that, Mm. you know, and to take in that information and then to make fun of them. Because that's what all the comedians and everyone was doing, you know, and we laugh along. And in the middle of it, there's a kid who's got a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Eric. Yeah, I would. I would think that when you set out to make the movie, <clears throat> you didn't know what footage you were going to end up with. So, what was your plan when you made the movie? Do you know it's really weird? I, I did a film before Santa. Um, I don't know if you, any of you have seen that. You should check it out. Santa. <laughs> Bad Santa. No, no, <laughs> Santa. About a racing driver, S E W N A, about a Brazilian racing driver. And it was made entirely out of archive. Um, and really, Amy came off the back of that. And it was essentially, it's a gut instinct you have. You have a feeling of, is there something here? There's a movie. And really, meeting Nick and hearing from Nick helped me understand, okay, there's another story here. And then Nick opened up his laptop at one point, showed me some of this footage, this raw footage. And that's when I started to see these performances and hear her sing and see them messing around. And that's when I think, okay. There is a story, because in a, such a short space of time, she went from this girl to that girl that I saw on the stage at the ending. And how the hell did that happen? You know, that's when you realise there's a movie, I think, because you realise that you we all kind of fell in love with her when we were making the film. Yeah. She's really cool. She's great. She had a rough uh, childhood. That's what I was going to ask. What was her family life like coming up? What kind of family life the father, did she have? The father was cheating on uh, the mom for many years, and but didn't leave the house. I mean, look, she had um, a lot of people, you know, certainly, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, myself included, you know, you come from home where, you know, parents divorce, affairs. Right. Like, I, can't, um, I think it's quite harsh to say that was it. I think it was a whole mixture of stuff. I think Amy also suffered from depression, and I think that wasn't so clear until later on. Um, but part of my beef with how she was handled by a lot of people online, the me- you know, certain parts of the media, is there wasn't much questioning around... You know, what's going on here? This isn't some girl just falling out of nightclubs trying to get attention. Actually, she could be depressed. There could be mental health issues. There wasn't any real commentary on that. I think you look back at the film and you go, 
you know, it wasn't six months of like being in the paper every day and being hounded by paparazzi. It was five years. So I think less so than like a broken home or, you know, because I think there's lots of people with stuff like that. Maybe sure. that didn't help. Sure. But I think, I think, I think she was quite a deep person. You can hear, you can see that in the writing and her character. Um, and I think, you know, uh, one of the one of the personal things that happened to her that that I think really affected her was losing her grandmother. She was very close to her. Gra- her grandmother was a very big personality, very strong personality, mm-hmm. and she died. She got cancer and died in 2005, right when Amy was going through a bad spell, and then the fame came along. There's so many threads, and that's why you know I didn't know what this film was going to be, and when I saw the cut, it was very moving for me not just personally but seeing all these different elements that maybe i hadn't thought of a lot of them as well you know i hadn't thought of the social the, the social part of it you know the um the bigger picture the internet the modern times the media that's something that has got me thinking about and re-evaluating and i'm hoping that this film does that to a lot of punters out there that go and see it yeah. Was she was she reading a lot of stuff and looking at that footage when she was in the press and the tabloids were all over? Or did she, did you try to block that away. I learned was that she... through through Asif's research. Actually, yeah, I, I, I spoke to people around her at at the, towards the ending, and yeah, she was reading it. She was, you know, you start having these arguments on Twitter, and she was having disagreements with people, and you know, at, towards the ending, her her friends who were around and kind of her security guards who were around her would say, you know, she'd be on on a computer like young people of that age would be looking at stuff both the negative stuff and even the positive stuff. The last few nights, you know, just sadly before she died, she was looking for performances of herself being good to remind herself she could sing. Wow. You so know. she was ingesting that negativity. Mm-hmm. Of course. Everyone does. Sure. You know, it's, it's, you've got to be a real Stay. strong kind of character she, to not look at anything would... written about you. And you can have a hundred <laughs> things that are great and you'll read the one negative thing and that will get you Oh, there. yeah. She uh, would have had a tough time. With, she would have had a tough time with Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Also, voice of morons. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Right. I mean, I yeah. think also um, when when you feel like maybe you're losing control, maybe your voice isn't holding up. You know, your health isn't great. You 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 know, it doesn't help. Then seeing that barrage of abuse, I mm. think. Yeah, it starts Constance sucking it down. Get, it's a self fulfilling thing, isn't it? It starts to. Um, it's not making things worse. Could you guys explain, in the movie, she went on vacation, uh, where was it, in the Caribbean, to get away and try to get her shit together, and she went down there with some friends and stuff, and um, she was going to take some time, and then all of a sudden her father shows up, Mitchell, with a camera crew to film film that. That was amazing, this film, because it kind of shows his character, because it was obvious that she was really trying to do the right thing and try to, you know, get away from the nonsense and maybe clean her, herself up. And there's the father seeing another opportunity, brings his own film crew to film her on vacation. And this is kind of part of the whole sequence where, you know, everyone around her, I think, just got a bit confused. It was just like people around her were making TV shows or selling stories to newspapers or writing books or just became... A circus, literally, a circus around her with her caught up in the middle of it. Um, you know, maybe he had the best intention somehow, but obviously it looks like for her it wasn't a great thing. When she's trying to get away from the media, the media's been brought to her. I think there were loads of things, unfortunately, that were going on like that with people around her. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's it's an uncomfortable thing to see, I guess. Has he, uh, is he going to sue you or any of that crap? Any of that shit coming out? I don't know. I think I think it's a kind of or real contradiction because he's he's said things, but also he's also said, as you said earlier, yeah. you know, to people go and see the film because there's lots of great stuff in it. Yeah. I think his his kind of arguments for the film are like there's a couple of lines at the beginning that he's not happy with that he feels have been removed, and there's a, a sequence of her life towards the ending where he says things were great and you're not showing that. But actually, the majority of the film, I don't think he's if you look in detail at what he's saying, he hasn't complained about. It's very difficult to make a film of someone's life and to please everyone. I mean, I went into cool. when making a movie, I was pretty sure no one was going to like this film oh it's impossible God. to please her because there's so many different parties all in disagreement and arguing and sadly somebody died yeah right so our <clears throat> aim was to try to get the essence of what was going on we can't show everything we can't put everyone in i spoke to 100 people and there's probably 25 voices in the film so it's a real delicate balance that you're trying to find just to show enough um and it's kind of our interpretation of what was going on but hopefully because it's made out of archive you can see it's all real stuff that was going on the main point of the film was to show you how great she was what was the actual cause of death sorry it was it was it it was alcohol they thought there was drugs but there was no drugs uh, yeah well you know it is a drug 
No, but I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's alcohol, long-term alcohol kind of issues and abuse mixed with bulimia is the thing. So that bulimia most of her yeah, life. Yeah, bulimia from a very young age, and it seems like that was a long-standing problem from her teens. <laughs> so, you know, there's no kind of, there was a kind of deficiency in salts, I think is what the doctor said to me. So that, alcohol and not eating, oh. not having anything. So she had emotional her. problems when she was young, obviously. Yeah. yeah, this is all kind of, there were issues there about, you know, weight and kind of self-image and self-esteem before fame. Fame just multiplies all of the issues. Yeah, problems, it's throwing you know? gas on the fire. I think young girls, this is a big problem. I mean, a big part of the film is just to kind of bring up a lot of these issues up for debate, which is every kid doing, right now is seeing certain kinds of women on screen oh, yeah. constantly yeah. and being brainwashed and thinking, you have to look like that. You know, um, and I think that she would have had these issues herself about weight. You know, pop stars were a certain size and weight. And she was the one that was unusual and different looking and original looking and dressed differently and sang jazz. You know, that's what made her great. Now people celebrate it. Sadly, she's not around. And great artists like her, you know, they're super sensitive people. That's what makes them great artists. And then, then you got this brutal, like you said, social media and where it's a brutal out there. Yeah. And she was ingesting it. And it's a bad combination. It was bad timing. And the, the U.K. press, like the media over there and the paparazzi is wor way worse. worse than even America. Yeah. 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 Right. This is phone hacking was going on, you know, it was a particular moment yeah. in time where she was the girl that, like I said, who was suffering these issues and but had the hit record and a hit song at the time when the newspapers stepped up another level because they'd gone digital. So there was like this press war going on between different multinational companies. She's caught up in the middle of it. So that footage, I mean, you know, when you've got 50, 60 guys s surrounding this petite young woman on her own trying to walk from her door to a car and they're all jumping her, flashing lights and manhandling her, it's pretty aggressive stuff. It's pretty visceral, pretty nasty to be in the middle of that. Mm. That's a crazy question, but did she enjoy fame at all? There, I don't remember seeing any clips where she enjoyed the limelight. I was just about to say, you know, something that, that isn't, you know, brought into, into people's consciousness very often nowadays is that sometimes you can be truly brilliant, whether in music, film, you know, sport, and you're just not looking for the fame or the money. That's not, you know, people find that really hard to believe nowadays because of how glorified fame is. But actually, occasionally you do find a sports star, an artist, someone just truly brilliant. And it's really not part of their drive to be famous, to be rich. Their drive is to create, is to have the freedom to do what they want to do. And, uh, and the rest of it can sometimes be like an accidental sort of repercussion of being great. And um, and I definitely feel like, you know, that's a, mis a, a misconception about Amy. Like, you know, very often you meet people going, why didn't she just cheer up? You know, she had such a voice. She had so much acclaim. She made all that money. It's really not about that for some people. And, you know, in my time with her, she was never interested in, in the checks, in the money. You know, it, at times I'd, I'd deliver her some really good news. To me, it would feel like really good news. To her, it would be kind of... Can I get the guitar I want to get? Can I buy the music I want to buy? Um, and I think that that's maybe left out the equation sometimes in how people see celebrity. Wow. Well, you, you made a great film, man. I Thank loved you. it. And then I tried to listen to some Amy Winehouse music <laughs> after I saw this thing, and I, I was just depressed. It gets a lot deeper. I was like, all right, now I'm going to go listen to some Amy Winehouse. I'm like, after two songs, I'm like, oh, God, I can't do it today. Well, maybe not straight away, but I tell you what, when you do hear the song, suddenly you realize there's so much more going on than you Absolutely. Thought. There's a lot more going on. The music was way more uh, personal than I ever realized. So It's really mature for such a young person. There's so many layers in that music. How can people see the documentary? Because it really was, what I, I, I watched an hour of it. It was, I like, started watching it at 11 o'clock last night like a fucking dunce. But it was <laughs> excellent what I saw. And how can people see it? It's out. I mean, it opened um, last week Last week in New York and L.A., and on the 10th, this Friday, it opens across the nation, so it's out there. Go and check it out. Yeah, I think it's going to do very well. 98% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Whoa. So. Yeah, really, really great and uh, extremely interesting, and it just shows you stuff that you never saw. And I love that personal footage, and, but none of it was boring. Like, personal footage can be tedious, but none of this was. It was well, all interesting. You get the full picture in the end. Yeah. You learn a lot more about Amy Winehouse than what we saw on TV. And in the tabloid, so yeah. I mean, I, it tells you not not all publicity is good publicity. You know, it's like she, it, it didn't work for her necessarily. But I think yeah, people get a true picture of the girl hopefully by seeing the right. Thing. S of Cappadia, right? Yeah. All right. right. Thank you so much. Thank the, you, the Nick, director much, of uh, you know the Amy Winehouse movie, and of course Nick, who uh, knew her pretty well in the early days, and the first manager. Yes. How do you say last name? Sh Shemansky. Shemansky. Very nice. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you guys. Really good job. Thanks. Thank, Thank you thanks guys. guys. We're going to take a quick break. We got Corey, Corey Teller. Corey Teller from Slipknot coming in next. Stay there.
Nick DiPaolo, Jim Florentine, just killing it for us today, man. Uh, really fast, Nick, get your plug in before we get uh, Corey Taylor from Slipknot in studio. Uh, I'll be at the Ridgefield Playhouse, Ridgefield, Connecticut, July 18th, and uh, the Ventura Harbor Comedy Club, July 22nd. And the podcast. So and the to- podcast, uh, Nick DiPaolo podcast at riotcast.com. Hit me up uh, on Twitter at Nick DiPaolo. And NickDip.com. And NickDip.com. <laughs> I'm, I'm web- the worst self-marketer. I love your website. My- you got huh? a good website name. I, have, I haven't com. been to it in a year. What's it look like? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Florentine, quickly, uh, This weekend, Stitches Comedy Club, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, What's Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's a door deal, so about a hundred bucks. <laughs> and July sixteenth, the Improv in L.A. with Morgan Murphy and Jason Lawhead. Big show out there next Thursday. And Jim Norton at the Brigada this weekend. Yeah, big, uh, big hoopla. Let's bring in Corey. No okay. one cares where I am. Obviously, right. if they want to go see me, go to my website. If not, feel free to ignore me. Let's get Corey in here. Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Stone Sour. Gentlemen. Of course. Everybody. Hey, Corey. Three, Three books. How are you? That's me. What's up, Corey? Uh, I God, I don't know. I'm not. You're not. Tell you what, it's been it's been the craziest four days, dude. And uh, I can smell myself, so that's not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I just saw Corey last night. He played the Stone Pony in Jersey. Did his uh, book tour show where he does like 45 minutes of stand up, which is like really? he could film it HBO special. I mean, it's not good. No. I don't want you guys to get the wrong. <laughs> no, it's phenomenal. It's not good at all. I've never st- st- <laughs> is it stand up or like spoken word? Like Henry Rollins was doing spoken word. Which it's is kinda it's like- more in tune with Henry Rollins because, I mean, he's funny. You know, like he's funny, but he's funny to his people. I'm funny <laughs> to my people. You know, like I couldn't do what you guys do. Like I couldn't go cold into a, into a club and try to make it work because at least the people I'm making laugh know a little something about me. You guys have it way harder than I was. I could, there's no way I could do it. And I got hit up by Live Nation. They were like, we're going to book you some stand-up <laughs> stuff. And I was like, I will kill you <laughs> in front of your children if you do that. No, me and Jameson were watching you. We'll go, we gotta go, we got to book a tour with Corey. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> no, he, he did 30 minutes last night up front on Kanye West with callbacks and killed. 30 minutes because there's a whole yeah. viral video of him ripping yeah, Kanye West apart. Yeah, but that's so easy. I mean, it just kind of sells yeah, itself. Nah, you know, but you, you, you make Kanye a West. great point. Points. What's the Kanye West points. thing all uh, all about for the people? Call himself haven't... the greatest rock star living or something like that. Yeah, yeah. the greatest living rock star. He's playing Glastonbury, which mm-hmm. if you're not familiar with that, is Coachella with a different accent. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, that would work. I got to tell him that would man. work. And uh, he, you know, he's on stage and he's in a little spaceship thing on stage. It's very strange looking. And he goes, "You people are witnessing the greatest living rock star of all time." And then proceeds to mess the words up to Bohemian Rhapsody in England. <laughs> in England. Hope he buys a fucking me? house over there. <laughs> Unbelievable, dude. I was. I, I, so, of course, I'm on Music Choice, and they ask me about it, and I'm. And I, so I just kind of cut this PSA where I'm just like, look, just stop. Can okay. we play this for the people? Oh, yeah, please hey, You look do. good in please your Star Wars well. T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking great, Corey. Yeah, it's my $10 Star Wars Target I shirt. I love it. It's good. Uh, let's play this. You are not. Not. <laughs> the greatest living rock star of all time. The fact that you had to tell people that... It kind of says it all. <laughs> you remind me of the guy who brags about put. <laughs> they never get as much as they brag about. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> For more of your favorite artists. Oh, God. And then the world went oh, nuts. You'll be deemed as racist. Huh? And, well, I mean... <laughs> It's hopefully, sure, yeah, because then, because that's a whole other bag of worms. It's like, where on the, show me on the doll where any of that's racist, mm. idiots. Yeah, so stupid. That video <laughs> went everywhere. I yeah. just want the yeah. people to know it's, it is. Yeah, it's it everywhere. Is, as they say, uber viral. So now you got Kanye fans against Slipknot's. Stone yeah, Sour yeah. Fans. Well, it's kind of precious because everybody's like. Well, you know, Kanye's got way more Grammys than Slipknot has albums. <sighs> and I'm like, Jesus well, that says it all. Christ. Yeah. So. Get a Grammy now is like getting a Teen Choice Award. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? You know? Like, it's ridiculous. And by the way, I have one, you jerks. That's At right. least one. 
Yeah, one for Slipknot is more impressive than fucking yeah. eight. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, we can swear? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Fuck. The, Dude, there you go. Oh, we can't say that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn it. Damn, I knew there was a line. <laughs> uh, the no, the thing today, though, I woke up, and now the academics are in on it. Like, oh, there's Jesus. all these, like, blogs on it. Like, this is like, well, Corey Taylor, actually, Kenya is... The greatest living artist, and this is why, blah, blah, blah. And, the, the, the. and this one woman, she's precious to me. She was like, yeah, but Corey's much better at his gig than Kanye West is. So, so what? Who cares if, like, you can show me, like, you can do the math and show me where he is. He still sucks. He bombed so. at Bonnaroo a few years ago. Like he insisted on on headline. He's such a yeah. twat. Yeah. He insisted on headlining the main stage. Mm-hmm. I think Pearl Jam had gone on. It's yeah. like They were going to give yeah. him the headline on the smaller, but this fuck makes everybody wait. And then he uh. goes on like four in the morning yeah. with that spaceship thing. Yeah. yeah. And there's it, it, it doesn't work as the light is coming up and they're booing him and it was a real disaster. He's a classic example of somebody trying too fucking hard, man. Yeah, but like, they still yeah. invite him back. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's well because they're hoping the Kardashians show up. That's right. And then they can blog about it. Okay. Right. Like, oh, Kim balanced a PBR can on her ass. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you, fucking <laughs> asshole. Who, who, who wants I to follow Corey. Pearl Jam? Yeah. That, that's right? just stupid. Yeah. How about an ego, huh? That's yeah. just stupid. Are you loving the attention, though? That this is no, right? the extra God, attention? No. God, no, because it's, it's, it's so it's, ridiculous, man. Like, it's like. But, but in that I've, way, it must be fun, is what I'm here's saying. Here's the thing I've written three books, I've sold millions of albums, I'm in two different bands, I, I'm in movies and shit, and this is what it took. This is what it took. Yeah, you talk about some hard world. on. That's our culture. I'm like, you gotta be kidding yeah, me, man. That's our culture. It's the new world. me out. But that, see, that's the problem. That's one of the reasons I wrote the book. Yeah. Is because everything is flipped on itself. It doesn't take anything to be famous anymore. Like, you know, the, it used to be you had to have talent. You had to have a work ethic. You had to have something creative and special to be able to be famous. Now, apparently, you come out of the right cooch. You get a reality <laughs> yeah. show. You're right. famous. And I'm like, really? Yeah, God, Dad was born in the wrong fucking decade. Man. Throw a puppy into a food processor on YouTube. <laughs> on and then you YouTube. immediately go on Facebook to see how many likes yeah. you got. <laughs> you know, with that said, unfortunately, we just got the they, book. They, they yeah. I would have loved to have read a few pages oh, before you came read. in. <laughs> Come on. Stop on that shit. Uh, there are pictures. Of the, that the, yeah, the book is called You're Making Me Hate You. Uh, what I like, the, the original title was supposed to be You're Making Me Hate You or How Justin Bieber Sucked a Million Dicks. To make his money, yeah, and uh, yeah. The, the publisher, yeah, the publisher didn't like that. They didn't no, like that. They no, needed to like, clean it up a little bit. They probably thought you were underestimating the number. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if I got sued for underestimating the number of dicks you suck? Amazing. That, that would have been amazing on that. Yeah, that would have been good. Uh, for a book. It's called A Cantankerous Look at the Common Misconception that Humans Have Any Common Sense Left. It's got to be in a great position to just write about whatever you want, and you don't have to just do a biography now. You can yeah. just kind of go off and whatever you want to talk well, about. Well, I told people, because they hit me up. You know, when I was first, when I first got the book deal, when I did Seven Deadly Sins, they were like, you want to do an autobiography? It's like, at the time, I was like, I'm 37. I, I still have 40 years, hopefully. You know, yeah. I'll write one when I'm 80. You know, like yeah. at least I'll have a life to talk about. Yeah. You know, I'm not, you know, it's like Tim Tebow writing one when he was 21. You kidding me? Really? That's a five minute book. Right. You yeah. know? So I, I was like, let me, like, I just, you know, I want to write about something I'm interested in. I want to, you know, pick stuff apart. I'll tell stories, but I want to write about something that is less about me and more about trying to make a point about something. And the great thing about this book is this was originally the book that I really wanted to write. Because I'm angry, you know, like, and, and I'm angry all the fucking time. I can't relate. Yeah, I, thank you, right? <laughs> so I had enough grist and fodder to fill probably an encyclopedia's <laughs> worth of shit, you know? So I, but I was like, you know, I was like, okay, I'll do the Seven Deadly Sins. And then I did the, 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 the book one thing happened on, you know, on the way to heaven. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I got to do the rage book just to get it on my system, just to see what happens. So. This one flew. You when know? did you write it, Corey? When did you, when I you come home from a gig on a plane and a hotel? Well, you know, I mean, you know, you guys travel as much as I do. So, I mean, you, you see it a lot, you know. So I just kind of just kept making mental notes. And I wrote it while we were recording uh, .5 The Great Chapter, the last uh, Slipknot album. It was last year. And I, so I would record in the studio and then go back to our house and then just, you know, just, you know, because, I mean, being in California... It's enough reason to piss anybody oh, yeah. off. You know? So you actually sit down at the laptop. You don't dictate into anything. No, no, I, yeah, I, I wrote that? it myself. So it's probably why my diction sucks. No, but, that's great. I mean, you know, it's 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 good. You know, and then of course I sent it to the other, and he was just like, 
Oh, boy. Here we fucking go. What did they make you take out? Uh, I had a couple things that they made me take out because they were afraid I'd get sued. Like, besides the Justin yeah, Bieber. Oh, the was, legal read? Yeah. But yeah. they were actually right. I'm glad I took it out. Personal, yeah. when you attack somebody personally, probably, <laughs> well, it right? It was a joke, but they're like, even though it's a joke, it's so inflammatory. It's a pedophile joke about someone no, who's not a pedophile. Sake, man, that's hey, what hey, the if you can't joke about pedophiles, I mean, yeah, where's exactly. America going? No, man, come on. What the fuck? Yeah, but Seriously? Yeah, but <laughs> don't hurt yeah. that kid fucker's feelings. <laughs> well, no, the guy's not a kid fucker. I just Gambler people, too. They I mean, that organization gets... I'm almost tempted to leave it. Um, so, <laughs> what, Corey, what are some of the stuff you're going after in the, in the book? Yeah, I mean, one thing about Corey, Corey's yeah. very outspoken. He's a rock star. You no, yeah, it's great. Like to say the least. And they I pick up, that out five minutes into this. And they pick up every quote. The media always picks up a quote that he says. And, and they turn it and into puts it out there. stupid story. It's so ridiculous. And he's great. And then, you know, he comes up with a book like this. And, yeah, and they were all over him. It. He gets yeah. attacked all the time, but people love him because, like, finally somebody's just... Well, yeah, yeah, I brought there. copies for everybody. I had two more copies oh, out there. So, yeah, so um, but some, some of the stuff, stuff in there is yeah, dealing with airports, just the 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 just the <laughs> the 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 emptying of the mental capacity. Just just being in the airport. That's not even getting on the damn That's plane. Right. Is ridiculous, and it's worldwide, man. It's like it's almost like the bigger the airport, the more stuff to look at, the worse it gets. Like it's ridiculous. Um, Kids, yes, I attack kids. And this is a father of three talking. Not a boy, then you have a subway sandwich. Exactly. No shit. Dude, what the hell is going on? That's that's your fourth book. Between Jared and Bill Cosby, what the fuck? I know. I don't know who to like more. Right? (laughs) I want to have a subway sandwich and have a quail over So, I mean, yeah, so there's a a ton of stuff. I mean, there's a whole chapter on driving, which I could have done a whole book on driving. Just, you know, and I, I start that one with just. Use your turn signal. Yeah. Figure it out. It's there. It's in the name of the function. It's a turn signal. You signal to turn. Don't be a fucking asshole. The, and don't turn from four fucking lanes over if you're turning left. The people. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, the no, plane is basically an emotional. It's like emotionally vomiting, and it's like either that or you're gonna fucking stick a knife in someone, and it feels yeah, great. Exactly. But, if I can't talk about this, I'm gonna lose my the, mind. The people driving and texting are horrifying. Oh, at this point. It's not it just Holy once in a while. Shit. Now it's the fucking. It's all the time. And, and you it's know all the time. Yeah, and you yeah. see them a mile away now. And and in our car, we're always like, watch, they're texting, and yeah. sure enough, every fucking time. I know they're drifting that's at what, the old lane. I think that's worse than driving drunk. I think. Yeah, both. it really, it really is. Oh, I'm going to really... try that excuse this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> officer, I'm not drunk. I was just texting. Yeah, exactly. Look oh, at the well, meeting. Technically, I was sexting. That's why I don't have any pants yeah. on. Look at the clit on this girl, officer. Come on. <laughs> you remember when the worst thing that could happen? I mean, besides drunk driving, was just a, a woman putting makeup on. You know, she's like right. five minutes late You'll to see the work, shit. right? And yeah. she's like just desperately trying to smear some fucking Avon on her face. Yeah, she not... still look like a fucking ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> but now she's on the Avon web. Yeah, right, drive. yeah. It's like, <laughs> I, I, need, I need raspberry beret. I know they have it. I know. Pff, there it is. It's hard but, not to, though, man, because we're not used to Our generation's not used to this being able to see everything. It's yeah. really hard to It's like thinking, but you can look at what you're yeah, thinking about. exactly. It's a really tough balance to fucking have. But the problem is this new generation doesn't either. Like, they'd like to think they are, yeah. but they can't fucking do two things at <laughs> one. They can barely <laughs> talk to people, you know? Like, yeah. they can't. there's no social skill. That I talk about that in the book too where you know the internet technology social media it, even though we're we're more connected it's breaking down everything that makes us makes us social you of know course. so now every every conversation is an argument every interaction is just yeah. people trolling each other so they can talk shit about something that you were trying to make a point about it's it's giving the voice to people who shouldn't have a yeah, fucking voice exactly a lot of them. it's ridiculous <laughs> Corey's not a fan of the selfie stick i see and, that i'm kind of bummed it's about that yeah. Yeah, again, i'm kind of bummed again, about that it's so just like this was news <laughs> this was news i <laughs> talked shit about a selfie stick and it's Did everywhere get hit by lightning using yes. a selfie yes. two people died <laughs> that's, that's odd that's, that's odd awesome. saying yes yeah. they, and actually they got four of them because really? there was two people who died and then two people injured. I was like, thank you. But that like, last that, photo was pretty photo. good. <laughs> that's the only sign, the only sign of a, a true deity is that he's like, you know what, I'm so fucking tired this is, of this shit. This is, this is me and my kid with his hair on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're missing uh, the beauty of the selfie stick, which was you put it on video and you go on the train <laughs> with, under a skirt. <laughs> it, is, it has now replaced the shoe mirror for anybody who doesn't understand what Jim's talking that's, about. That's a commitment to get yeah. mirrors on your shoes, by the <laughs> right? way. 
or polish yeah, yeah. really. Patent leathers. Yeah. The ones you wore the I used to, yeah, yeah, I yeah, used to order those up. fucking videos, upskirt video. Creepiest thing. I would go there and I would actually buy them in the adult bookstore. Just guys in the mall following girls up escalators looking at their panties. It was really I just stand creepy. under the escalator. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, what do you do when you're when you're performing and you got a bunch of guys with those goofy selfie sticks or everyone videotaping your show and not wa actually watching you? Do you call uh, them out? Does it bother well, you? It, last night I didn't do this, but usually at a Slipknot or a Stone Sour show, especially if they're up front and I can get to them, I unload as many bottles of water on them as <laughs> oh, possible to ruin those things. It's like, you're here. Why are you doing Like, you're watching the show through your phone. Is that how bad we are now? Yeah. So I just... Fucking unleashed, <laughs> and then I go back over. I get two more, and then 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 it's eight, and then by then they're drenched. Their Maybelline's running down their face, and they're just like, and that's uh, the guys. Uh, yeah, that is the guys. You know, and so you know, I, yeah, I got a lot the of emo fans. Away. That well, eventually, because it's not a phone anymore, it's a fucking doorstop. Yeah. I'm sorry, are we interrupting you. No, no. no. <laughs> I, I was reading uh, uh, what you said about the Confederate flag. I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting because I mean everybody talks about you know heritage versus hate and everything. Right. It's like yeah, but you know history kind of teaches us that it is about hate. You know, mm -hmm. like, like I mean you can talk about the General Lee all you want. Yeah, it was a great show when I was a kid, but it still stands for the fact that you were trying to keep the right to own people. You know, like it's I, I don't get it. It's, it's 2015. You know, it's not like it's fucking 1901. Right. It's 2015. If you can't figure out why it's wrong to put a Confederate flag in front of a place where it's, you're supposed to have fucking equal justice, then you need to go back to fucking sleep, man, because you're never going to figure it out. Yeah, I find it uncomfortable on this stuff. In private life, it's like the fact that Walmart won't sell it is a little irritating. But, but they're selling Iranian flags. That's, yeah. a, that's the shame. That's, Cuban flag. That's the problem. Exactly. Well, they, they, showed all the, they showed all the you other can't stuff. They scrub selling, our fucking so. history. You want right. to, you know? Yeah, take off the state property. But then, you know, I, I did a, a tweet because I was on Amazon. It was like you can still buy Mein Kampf. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. and, you, and you should be able to because right. I have the. the it's, a, it's a funny book. Everybody has the right. To free, <laughs> everybody has the right to free speech, but what, I mean, you know, when you're flying that outside of a government building, yeah, exactly. that's not right. You know, I'm not taking away from anybody's right to wear it. It's fine. You can believe what you believe. You can you can actually superimpose your beliefs for what you think it stands for. Because a lot of people don't understand what it stands for. They think it's General Lee, it just represents the South, and we're good old boys and whatever. That's fine, but you don't understand that there's a whole other level that that represents, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah, I mean, on the one hand, Walmart shouldn't have done that, and it's just another fucking overreaction to something that made sense here, but then people just completely overdid it and made it fucking contrite and stupid. But yeah, you shouldn't well, then be flying that in front of a government that, building. Everyone starts freaking out. Then you got to get rid of the Dukes of Hazard reruns. Yeah, they're I mean, talking it's about like, gone no, with no, the winds. No one was yeah, bought, no one was on. bothered by it on the you know on, yeah. the, on the general lady. They for just all pulled out. I mean, not to k kind of get away from that. They, do you see that they pulled the statue down of Bill Cosby at, at Disney World? We should. No. Yeah, because he was on the like the TV Walk of Fame. They pulled the statue down. Well, they, they have a policy when there's when there's a comma in the number of rape accusations. <laughs> 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 Hey, I mean, you want to talk about somebody's? You want to talk about somebody's heartbreaking, man? When uh, I fucking heard that, I was like, "That's it. That's fucking it, man." Like, because I mean, I grew were out up there forever, though. I yeah, grew, yeah but you see, I didn't shit. know it. I no? didn't know it. You know, like I grew up listening to Cosby albums with my grandmother. You know, and I'm talking about like 200 miles per hour. Uh, you know, fucking wonderfulness. Like, I love those albums. And then, obviously, as a fan of the show. And then, you know, so you think that w the one guy who would have fucking integrity, you know, is it, the it's roofing fucking Yeah, women. who knew I Dr. Huxtable is writing his own prescription? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Quaaludes and Benadryl. So now I'm just, I, maybe that's why I'm, I'm just a little more bitter today than I was fucking yesterday. Because I read that and I was like, ugh. Fuck you. Well, Cosby's the guy, like, it's a proof that you really never know anyone as, think, as well as you think you yeah, do. No, you dude, can no never doubt. believe the public persona, because if he, he he wasn't just cheating on his wife. If that's dirty yeah, stuff, man. Yeah, they, just yeah. Hit it, they just hit it well. Everyone kept quiet. Yeah. Because you talked yeah. to enough people, he said, oh, we always we all knew he was a lady's man. creepy and that's ass. A, and that's a bum out, man. That's yeah. such a bum out. Yeah. There's so many people you'd expect that from, uh, but those are not the ones that usually... The ne they never are. Yeah, man. Like, it's, it's, I mean, you look at the public perception of, like, people, like, look at me, 
And they're like, oh, well, he's a fucking, you know, tattooed, satanic rock star, whatever. Like, I got three kids. I make them fucking lunch and dinner. I pick them up from school. I take my own trash out. And yet, I had a protester at my book signing in fucking Bryant Park last oh, night. Fuck's or sake. yesterday, fucking, except Jesus. And I was like, well, do you take debit cards? I mean, is it, <laughs> is it checks? Is it only fucking, right. you know, money orders? I mean, you gotta be a little more specific, bro. I mean, I know you only have the little sign. But you got to put, you know, like, you know, the the terms and conditions on there. And in fairness, you make breakfast for the kids, but then again, so did Nicky Santoro. Santoro. That's, <laughs> I was going to say that, too. No matter where he was, at 6 a.m., he came home. He always made pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what I'm burying somebody in a desert. Time for fruit loops. And Bill Cosby was making girls cappuccinos in the morning. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's at least something you can say. He sent him away with a you know, little caffeine to wake him up from the fucking quaaludes he crushed up in their fucking wine. Imagine and having a play date with Corey Taylor's kid. My my son that's, almost had one yesterday. No, yeah, I, I yeah, think that would be a out. good thing, but, you know. He, 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 Corey travels with his family and stuff, and Slipknot's got blamed for a lot of shit, you know, and whenever something goes down, yeah. if someone might have had Slipknot on their iPod, all of a sudden they get, they get blamed. They're yeah. like the new Ozzy Judas Priest back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I'm just waiting for somebody to get and, caught with Pat Boone on their iPod. Yeah. Like, fucking, <laughs> like wearing, yeah, like wearing a human mask, and, right. you know? And this, and this humor in your music that the mainstream media never really... Well, yeah, I mean, it's just... And that's the problem. Never really got it. Sometimes it does, it's sometimes it doesn't pay to be smarter than people are supposed to be, you know? Like, I take very pr proud about the fact that, you know, I can, I can write not only well, but intelligently. But people only take face value anymore, or they have to have it spoon-fed to them. So if one person says that you know, heavy metal's dumb and whatever, then it gets picked up, and it's like, oh, well, heavy metal's dumb. It's like, really? Okay, spell intellectual. Uh, he's like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Mm, Take, yeah. let's keep listening to your fucking Kanye West fucking albums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy though, when he wore the Jesus cross, uh, oh, or the, uh, the crown of thorns, I'm like, this guy's edgy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, why do so many people like him though? He's he's, he's a talented oh, he's guy. He's he, but he's he is a talented guy, and but that's mixed in with such a douchebag behavior. Yeah. He looks like fucking an asshole. Mark it half the time though. He, you know what? He, he, he reminds me a lot. Of Marilyn Manson, because when 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 everything's kind of starting to kind of wane as far as like popularity and attention, all he does is say something or do something, and people are right back on him. You yeah. know, and I almost feel bad for yeah. saying what I did because now there's so much attention on him that I feel like I gave him free press. It's, you know, it's too funny though. Yeah, oh, funny, dog, funny, yeah, you can't that let that go. Funny, and then I, and I love it with the, the the whole thing that capped it off was fucking the words up to Bohemian Rhapsody, as it's like, oh, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't bother just like you're gonna do a cover. Learn the words, asshat. Did he change them on purpose or did he no, really he just make a mistake? Them up and then just and then he goes to the audience. He's like, go. Mm. That's like really. I mean, I can do that with my own songs, but don't do that with a cover. Right, not, not something that famous that everyone knows the words to. <laughs> right? Speaking of covers, we played Nutshell earlier. Yeah, I heard that, man. Thank Fuck, you. Fuck, man. That's a great tune. Love Alice I in only, Chains. I only hope I did it justice. Oh, you're Felt phenomenal. Like, yeah, yeah. We're kind of bummed we don't have a better version. The version was hard to hear. It was hard to oh, hear. Well, yeah. 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 I wish that... Uh, Jimmy I, got it with his selfie. Yeah. <laughs> selfie stick. Have you, have you released that, or will you release... <laughs> I, yeah, everybody keeps asking me if I'm going to do like an acoustic solo album, and it's too good. Why not? I, well, I mean, I'm in two awesome bands. You know, right. I kind of get to do whatever I want musically. You know, and yeah, um, honestly, with my schedule and everything, like all the stuff that I do, I, you know, I, I just I don't have time, and it's it's not like there's something in me that needs to do it yet, and and that's kind of I kind of follow my my whims when it comes to that. So if it ever gets to the point where, like, I really feel like I've got, like, a good batch of tunes that I want to do, I'll do it. But for now, man, fuck, dude, I'm one of the luckiest dudes on the planet, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a good problem to have. Um, so. Yeah, with Slipknot and Stones and being in two big bands. And then Stone Sour just did a whole covers EP. Yeah, covers Children EP. in a Grave, you did some Metallica on that. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. And you got, like, more gun, coming like out. Kiss and Kiss liked it so much they put it on their homepage, which was really, oh, really nice. cool. Wow. Yeah, Paul Stanley was like, he was like, this is amazing. Like, and they put it on their like the official site, and we were like, uh, <laughs> oh, awesome, you know. It's so. not, I like when bands. I love cover. I'm a big fan of cover. One of my favorite things that Kiss ever did was when on Love Gun they did, uh, and then and then she and kissed then she me. kissed me. Yeah, fucking yeah. awesome to hear a band just do something you don't expect them it's to do. Really good tune. Yeah.
Would you guys ever cover something that was completely out of like the musical demo or completely? Kinda, yeah. I mean, the, we have we have two other covers EPs coming out because we kind of plotted it as a trilogy, and we're releasing them like every six months. So the next one, which is called Straight Out of Burbank, because it's like it's the Burbank tapes, basically. The first one's called Meanwhile in Burbank. The second one's Straight Out of Burbank, and then the third one's No Sleep Till Burbank. <laughs> so the second one's got everything from Slayer to Motley Crue to Rolling Stones on it. So, you know, we I mean we're our all of our musical tastes are pretty pretty diverse. You know, there's a Bad Brains cover on it as well, which is one of my favorite what? bands. Yeah. And then the third one has got everything from Violent Femmes to A C D C. So I mean we really try to keep it we we're trying to wear our influences on our sleeves. You know? Wait, which Rolling Stones song? I need... uh, Give Me Shelter. Nice. Oh, wow. You know what's nice. great about Corey? He has a slip non Stone Sour fans come to his, you know, his book tour, his acoustic show, and then he does a little Red Corvette by <laughs> Prince, <laughs> nice. Chris Isaac, Wicked, Wicked. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? He and, and people love it. They're all singing along. They lose just, their mind. They lose, yeah. with uh, Take It Easy by uh, the Eagles. Oh, yeah. And all, like, every metalhead in there is just like, oh, I love this song! <laughs> <laughs> like, and then they go home and they're like, Damn it! I love that. Song. <laughs> like, it's it's kind of it's kind of awesome. I never understood radio separating all the fucking music genres. Well, it's like cause that. It, well because I never understood that. And, and you know what? I mean, the thing is, is it honestly only really happens here. Like you go right? overseas, yeah. and music is music to them, man. Like they'll like uh, especially in England, man. Like it's the the people embrace music so much so much more freely overseas than they do here because everybody feels like you have to compartmentalize everything so it'll make sense to people and i think that's why people's tastes have developed the way they have like you look at a lot of the younger generation they only like one style they won't even listen to any other style except for heavy metal fans heavy metal fans are a little more diverse in their tastes you know like a lot of heavy metal fans are hip-hop fans but it's usually the edgier hip-hop stuff you know so i i think if we could just break those barriers down we might be able to get back to a point where people could like a little more music. Mm. It's always bummed me out that, I mean, going back to the Grammys, that there's only like a, a specific group of at, like bands or albums that are included in like the best album category, you know, no matter wh how many they sold. So to me, it's a, popu it's a popularity contest inside of a group of people who really don't understand what music's all about. And... It, it, you know, until we can kind of open that up, it's it's just it's never going to go away. There's festivals over in Europe, like the Download Festival. I saw Slipknot over there. Yeah. I think 2009, they headlined in front of 80,000 people. Jeez. The band that's on, like four bands before them, it's all day thing, is Journey. Yeah. And the crowd loved Journey, were killed, and then Slipknot comes on <laughs> and and two hours later, and they love Slipknot. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, the yeah. I remember hearing about Journey opening for the Stones and getting boot, boot off like in the 70s. That's crazy, man. <laughs> and, they, and you put that, and you're just like, really? Yeah. It's like, well, it's like when Rush opened for Kiss, like back in the 70s, man. Like, people at first were like, uh, I don't know And then the this. more it went on, like, then I was like, oh, okay, all right, I dig this. I what? saw footage of uh, Ozzy in uh, North, in South Korea, not North Korea, South Korea, <laughs> and he was doing... <laughs> It might have been the Philippines. He was doing a festival with Psy. Psy was the uh, opening. <laughs> really? Yes. Really? Psy went on. I was like, oh, that's the Gangnam Style, dude. Yeah, yeah. but he went on before Ozzy, and, and apparently both of them did very well. Like the crowd, because he was so <laughs> mad. But that, to me, is... And he had another oh, hit, Corey. He had Gentleman. And then, yeah. I prefer, if you want to get off this, uh, I prefer <laughs> Gentleman to Gangnam Style. Thank you. Guys, I do too. it's I a much too. better song. The beat is better. I mean, you know, I've started a lot of controversy with that one. <laughs> Have you, ever, have you ever tried the Gangnam Style dance? I have not. Not even alone in your apartment? I know. I'm not big for the dance. That's how I close my act now. <laughs> <laughs> it always kills. Yeah. It always kills. I, yeah. I want to make sure we're selling this book properly. All right, good. I, I, I mean, what else can we say about it? Well, by mean, the way, where's the you're, signing? You're taking, on, you're taking on everyone in this book. You're trashing everyone, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the ninth? Uh, <laughs> So you're going to be in Huntington tonight yeah. at the Book Review. That's an independent bookstore. That's a great really bookstore. Good to yeah. do. Uh, tomorrow, My hometown, Corey. Yes, Huntington, Long Island. Tomorrow, July 10th, you will be at uh, St. Andrew's uh, Hall. Is that a performance or is that That's a... That's a performance, oh, yeah, okay. in Detroit, yeah. And, oh, you're doing the book signings on a separate part. July 12th, there'll be a book signing in uh, Edina, Minnesota. Uh, in Barnes and Noble at one o'clock, July nineteenth. That's my birthday. Just making it about me, which is always good during an interview. <laughs> and then book soup in L.A. Uh, Twelve p.m. 
Is that the same day, July 19th? Oh, yeah. July 12th. Yeah. I'm sorry, I fucking That's stink. Okay. It's all right. July 12th, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and then uh, July 19th, Los Angeles. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah go see the, the show. The live show is great. Yeah. The no, 45. I can't now. It was last night. I didn't, no, I'm saying, but for anyone upcoming date, 45 minutes of stand-up. I know you're talking to the other people. And then, oh, and I do a Q&A. Yeah, do a Q&A. Yeah, I do a Q&A. I wish I went last night now. Fuck. <laughs> so good. Uh, the, well, I mean, if I keep doing books, I'll keep doing tours like this. I have a blast doing it, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, we did two hours 40 last night. I mean, it was it was kind of half and half, and... The, the audience, none of, nobody left. Even the guys, like even the weird ones over by the bar, that were like, yeah. "We can't hear you." <laughs> I'm like, "Well, then get the fuck away from the bar, you jackass." The speakers are pointing this way. There, he's phenomenal with hecklers. People yelling out shit. Just stops right in the middle. I can imagine. I'm I don't like, think you have to tell phenom- me that. Yeah. I, I looked down at a piece of paper and he attacked me. <laughs> I, like, I, was like, <laughs> I noticed everything. <laughs> Jesus. How many Slipknot shows can you do in a row? Because that to me seems um, like a pretty intense. I, I put the limit at three in a row, day off, three in a row, day off. Um, because we did, man, we did a crazy run in 2000. We went over to Europe. We did 28 days straight. We did, and like it, when we weren't doing shows, we were doing uh, TV shows. So I mean, it would basically sing. So I sang for 28 days straight, and I got home, oh and I was God. like, I don't know if I could do this anymore. And but I, so I had to set the limit. I was like, look, I'm, you know, and and luckily I've been able to kind of keep that up. You know, I mean, I I work out, I take care of myself, I try to eat right, I still you know smoke and drink a lot of coffee, but. It, it doesn't it doesn't hurt me as much as I would like to think. So I've still been able to kind of maintain that. So I can do five or six shows a week, like well, at, at a he, clip. He also he uh, won't yeah. never his voice never cracks. I went to a slut match show one time after a two and a half hour show. They were on tour for like two months. After the show, he's in a tent playing in a cover band singing more songs. I'm yeah, like, dude, yeah. what, don't you fucking rest your voice? Yeah, like, this I'm, is fun. I'm a fucking the glut- cigarettes yeah, don't uh, hurt. The yeah, book. no, no. The only time it really affects me is like if I get sick, you know, and you kind of have, you know, over over time you just develop cheats to kind of get through it. You know, the only thing I really do is I do lemon juice and honey, and that seems to help a little bit. No tea, no hot water or anything, just lemon juice and honey. And it just, you know, well, not to get gross, it lubes up the vocal cords, if you know what I mean, ladies. <laughs> um, and that kind of gets me But how about it, lung you know? capacity? It doesn't lung capacity, affect, I, doesn't you know, I, I run, when I when I work out, I do, you know, between three and five miles at a clip, you know, and then I work out. So I'm doing cardio and then, like, weight wow. training and stuff. And you smoke? And I smoke, That's yeah, what I, I mean, do. After I work out, I have a sick... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you, I, look, I'm That's not an asshole. I wait 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, fine, you know. How but, do you sleep? Uh, not well. I got a baby, so, I mean, it's... Oh. Yeah, Jesus, so. when do you sleep is the question. Well, exactly. I mean, last night, we got Christ. back to the we got back to the hotel at, like, 2. Baby got up for a, a <laughs> bottle at 3.30, oh, God. and then I fell asleep with her kind of in my arms, drooling on myself. I was like, Ugh. So my wife gets, gets some sleep, you know, and then we got up at 7 to so I could be here. Oh, so it was Jesus. pretty crazy. And then a lot of time they're on a tour bus trying to sleep, too. But I tell you what, man, I sleep really well on a tour bus because it's almost like getting in a coffin. Like, you know, you shut everything down. Like, it's it's almost like sensory deprivation, and it's, I'm out. Like, as soon as the bus starts, the engine rolls, no it's kidding. like, boom. That's yeah, called exhaust fumes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 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 I want to nap. i got to park the car in the garage. Yeah, right. <laughs> Corey's not like a light. It's nice and tight in there. <laughs> Keep shaking them. I would never be able to sleep on a tour bus. I did a tour bus. No, I did a tour with a couple bands. It's not bad. I, I was all nervous about it, too. No, I'm just assuming that the fucking driver's falling asleep. Yeah. You did that. Oh, my How God. How about the I whores would... running around, making the a racket? Whores. Well, we <laughs> were in slippers, <laughs> so, I mean, it's fine, you know? It's like, leave your high heels at the fucking door. We don't need... We have people sleeping back here. How hard is it to organize nine people? Like, oh, that, how... oh, dude, it's like trying to keep puppies in a box. Right. Like, it's ridiculous, it is, man. Right? Like, that's why, I mean... I now when I travel, I, I I travel with my family, so I get my own bus, you know, so I don't have to worry about the crazy people. But then, you know, you go into the show, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm in this fucking band with a bunch of maniacs, <laughs> and you know, Sid's running down the hallway naked, clowns <laughs> talking about the cosmos. Like, I mean, it's it's 
I'm in a band with crazy people. Yeah. Like, yeah, I want a, you to, I want, I want you all to feel bad for me. There's a party bus, there's a slip, there, yeah. Yeah, some, yeah, there, yeah. There's a slip, not party bus, then there's the mellow bus, and then there's the family bus, so. Yeah. You hop from one to one, to another, to another, whatever you feel like. Just doing like that being night. a comedian, huh, fellas? Yeah. 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 My part driving myself to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck on exit nine, trying to get to the fucking holiday in. <laughs> the party call you're playing Celebration by Cool in the Gang. Right? That's a good jam. That is a good jam. It sure is. It pitched me up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tour bus I've never done, though, man, but it seems like it'd be kind of fun. Even it just even though it would be uncomfortable, it just seems like there'd be a fun vibe to it. It seems it's awesome. Really, yeah, it's, I mean, it's me. cool. I mean, uh, we've, you know, we've been doing this now 16 years, so we've met a lot of really good drivers and gotten, like, really good uh, relationships with these guys. So usually we'll get the same driver that we had from, like, the previous tours and stuff and just kind of keep them for the duration. And, I mean, they're... Real smooth, real conscious of what's going on, you know. Like that's, you know, they're not they're not mainlining speed and fucking. It's like, oh, I gotta get these fuckers to the gang, ah! you know. So it's yeah, we we find the calm ones. Yeah, don't get the New York City ones that bring the Asian people from oh Chinatown to Foxwoods. Dude, <laughs> they I wish fall I had, asleep halfway up. I wish I had the video. I wish I had the, the video time. on my phone. That's my buddy, insane. my buddy Jason shot this. We took an Uber over here, right, because the car service took a shit on us, and it was this wonderful old man named Jose, right? Spanish. He was just very you know, animated. It's like, oh, get your bags and blah, blah, blah. So we're in their Uber. And I had, I had, uh, I had straight to your face by hate breed stuck in my head. Nice. So I had to pull it up on my phone just to hear it. He goes, oh, you can plug this in. So I plugged it in, dude. We are jamming hate breeds so loud. And he's going, yeah. I mean, the guy had to be like 70, right? And he's really? like, oh, I'm very much awake now. This is good. So we're, so we're teaching him the backups, dude. And it's hilarious. Dude, Jason shot a video of it. He's just, he's pumping his fist. It's fucking, it's so good. That's great. Where is that video? Yeah, it's, it's a nice way to start the day. Yeah. Jason's right over there. Yeah. He's got him. And all I'm, this, right the the this is what a prima donna I'd become. All I'm thinking of is who's the shitty car service <laughs> that didn't show up <laughs> i hate that oh, oh he's got it yes oh this ought to be great oh. wow you trust him all with your yeah, phone yeah really that what was is it like to live a life without go, shame go sweat. <laughs> <laughs> If oh, you break God. it, he's fine. You guys got to put this somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, well, knowing him, he's a Facebook maniac, so he'll probably post it up. He's he. That's where he oh, posted those pictures of around. Jim looking at him longingly from the <laughs> side of the stage last night. It's hilarious. The guy is really. Creepy. <laughs> he's really going with it. He really is. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, and it's a really heavy hate breed song. Not, yeah. Everyone is, pretty much. Uh, Corey, oh. a lot of your fans checking in. I want to take a call from Eddie in uh, North Dakota. Eddie. Eddie. we got Corey Let's Taylor from Slipknot in studio. <laughs> What's up, Corey? His new book, You're Making Me doing? Hate You, is available now. Hey, uh, when Mick got stabbed in the back of the head, did he take any time off, or did he just keep touring? Um, luckily... <laughs> I mean, for those people who don't know, unfortunately, uh, my guitar player was involved in an, in an incident. Um, he spent a day in the hospital. Uh, luckily, we were on a break right when that happened, so we were actually at home. Um, he's fine for anybody wondering about like his health. He's he's doing great. He's recovering. Um, but yeah, no, we we didn't have to. He didn't take any time off. He was he was worried that we were going to miss shows because of him. And I was like. Well, what did the doctor say? And he's like, oh, the doctor's saying I'm fine. He's like, well, then we're good. We're yeah. fine, man. So, <laughs> yeah, the, he's, he's doing okay. It's a great question for a heavy metal yeah. band. <laughs> Thanks for opening with that question, sir. That guy's a fucking beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a great question. You never hear Tony Bennett get that question. <laughs> See, the horn player got kicked in the cock by a awesome horse. awesome if he did, though. <laughs> it's like, what was it like fucking getting berated by Buddy Rich? You know? <laughs> Mick is the guitar player in Slept, not a big, yeah. huge guy. Yeah. He came to one of my stand-up shows in Des Moines, yeah. and someone was heckling me. And Nick, Mick was going over there to beat the shit yeah, out. I yeah, had to dude. stop mid show and go, Mick, no, no, it's fine. No. He was, and he was fucking ready to knock yeah. over tables. Yeah. He was that mad. Mick is fiercely yeah. protected. Yeah. Man. yeah. He's, he's fucking awesome. He's a though. good guy to have on your side. <laughs> I need a person like that in my life, like a Panera bread manager to go over and fucking smash, smash somebody for talking during the show. I would always encourage violence to stop the chatter. Amazing. Panera bread manager. <laughs> when you get your bodyguard, Panera bread. So good. <laughs> 
Uh, so he's God. okay though. He got yeah, 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 he's okay. fine. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he he's, he doesn't even like talking about it, man. Like it gets real, like because he's very, you know, he's very private. And the fact that the pit, the the story got picked up, he was just like, God damn it! And I was like, and Benny Han is a dangerous place. Yeah, it is. Well, it really is, man. Well, it's it's, come. I mean, that's some places don't even flip the knives anymore, and now you see why. Yeah, yeah, it's but funny. you like when they do the little choo choo and the smoke comes out. <laughs> if you don't like that, you're not an American, right? Or the oh, volcano, the onion volcano. Yeah. That's my favorite. The best. The best. I think that's the best. Right. Your clothes stink for six months. I fucking hate it. Korean barbecue is fun for three minutes. <laughs> and then you go to take a your bathroom and you're like, my fucking shirt smells. This is fucking horrendous. It is bad. It's the worst. The one that Jonathan brings you through. I, I want to LA. push his face onto the grill. I'm like, this fucking place sucks, John. You hear this coming out of the kitchen? <laughs> that should be another six minutes with some noise. <laughs> Let's go to uh, West in North Carolina. Wes. Yeah, what's up, guys? Please, this guy's man, name, man. Talk to Corey. Hey. Yeah, man, Corey, what's up, man? I love your work, man. You got a great voice, dude. Oh, thank you. Hell yeah, man. Uh, uh, there's a cool picture of uh, uh, it's, uh, fucking Kanye, man. He's saying he's the best, you know. <laughs> and then uh, the same caption is uh, young Keith Richards smoking a joint with the caption that says, bitch, please, underneath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check it out, man. Yeah, uh uh, Tim, Jimmy, uh, love your work too, guys. Uh, Nick, uh, any of you guys coming to Idaho for shows? I got a meeting meet with some white fellas out there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, Salt Lake or anything? <laughs> or anything? I think, I think, Sli- yeah. I think Slipknot's playing Salt Lake. Uh, on this upcoming tour, like in uh, like August or September, somewhere in there. Check uh, whatever whatever the uh, yeah, yeah, chicken mass or whatever. I'm not sure. Slipknot, Lamb of God, and who was it? The other Slipknot, yeah. Lamb of God, Bullet for My Valentine, and uh, Brand, uh, Motionless and White. Motionless and White yeah. are playing this summer. I'm going nice. going in a few weeks. Let's uh, let's say hi to Tango in Tennessee. Tango. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Corey, man, you're freaking awesome, dude. By the way, I oh, do all right. I have nice pants. Hello. I appreciate Hello. that. I love the uh, nutshell cover, man. I'm hoping uh, Google Play throws that up uh, to purchase soon. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, I'm sure they will. It's, it's, yeah. I, I encourage them to do that because Alice in Chains is an awesome band. So. Oh, I agree. I agree. So uh, speaking of, you know, uh, awesome bands, man, uh, I heard rumors of way early on uh, that, you know, Slipknot, uh, they didn't want any outside influences. So you guys locked yourself in some cabin somewhere. So you wouldn't, you know, copy anybody else's music. I just want to know how true that is, and if so, um, what is your influence for music? Uh, well, I, I can safely say I've never been locked inside a cabin. I mean, that that sounds very <laughs> deliverance. Yeah. I mean, I can squeal with the best of them, but I don't want to prove it. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Right, right, right. yeah, you're mixing them up with David Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, when we did the first album, we recorded at a place called Indigo Ranch in Malibu, which is kind of up on a uh, on a mountain. Like, it was very majestic, and then you got these nine assholes from Iowa that's going, I bet you could throw this tangerine clear across the ocean. I bet we could do it, you know? So, um, no, we didn't lock ourselves in a cabin or anything, but... Uh, as far as our influences go, I mean, the great thing about Slipknot is that we're like we're all so diverse in our like musical tastes that we try to bring a little bit in to to create something different, you know. So, I mean, right, we're influenced right. by from everything from Public Enemy to Slayer, you know, or you know right. stuff like that. So, I mean, we we have a lot of different influences that we then try to shred up and you know kind of turn it into something unique. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, you guys are definitely a big influence on me. I hope to be up there someday. All right, oh, man. Well, good luck with everything. Fuck, man, the phones yeah. that everybody wants to talk to. Bill in Boston, go I'm ahead. I'm sorry, guys. No, <laughs> that means it's working. Okay, that good. makes us happy. Go All ahead, Bill. Sorry, right. brother. How are you, my friend? I'm good, man. I'm good. Huge, huge Slipknot fan. I, I've seen you a bunch of times, but I'm an even bigger Guns N' Roses, Zach Rose fan. The comments you made about... Rubbing your nuts on Axel's uh, piano yeah, really pissed me off, man. How how dare you do that to someone like Axel? Uh, knowing <laughs> Axel, it's quite easy, my friend. I mean, anybody Axel who Rose makes his fans wait for two to three hours yeah, for him to go on stage, on. I have no you know respect why? for. You know why, Corey? Because he can, and we sit there and wait for him. No one would do it for you. That's wow. why. You don't think that's douchey to make your fans wait that long, though, dude? Come on. Hey, hey, Jimmy, Jimmy, don't go to the show. 
but we go to the show and we know what's going to happen. I that's didn't know. Happen. I didn't know when but I was in happened. Toronto and it happened to me. Yeah, three hours yeah. after. Uh, go home, Corey. Go home. You're making your bandmates wait too, and the band hated it too. The band hated it. James Hetfield hated him. It was Skid Row, and then we waited for two fucking hours in yeah. Toronto. So you're falling I, apart mentally. You're, you're, you're panicking on the other end. Has more musical talent in his pinky than you have in your entire friggin' body. That's a really good example, so you, you wish, sound like an old lady. You wish, you wish, you <laughs> Is this a real caller? No. You wish you could be Axel Rose. I'm, I'm glad Never. you called. I think it's I'm hilarious. Glad you, I'm glad you called. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. I don't know, I don't know sixth graders listen to the show. <laughs> yeah. He's got more to. Uh, you sound like fucking Rupert He's fucking gonna be idiot. 50 times more Jimmy, famous Jimmy, than you. Shut up. That's my <laughs> show. I'll talk if I want. <laughs> shut up. You <laughs> shut up. That's it. I don't Shut mind up. waiting. Shut up, you music cuckold. Uh, he can be Shut as late up. as he wants. I'll just suck dick in the crowd until he decides to go on. <laughs> Shut up, you fucking man ass eater. I'm actually saying that to myself. <laughs> All right, Bill. All right. Get listen, a hold of yourself. Listen, I appreciate Jesus, I appreciate a few Guns N' Roses songs, but I I also appreciate that I you said that about Guns Axel Rose. Dude. Three like, hours I is love, despicable. Well, I love Appetite. I think that's a fantastic album. Of course it is. But... When you make your fans wait that long, and I don't give a fuck what that hard on just said, mm. that, oh, we expect it. Well, you're a fucking idiot then. <laughs> no yeah. self All right? <laughs> Figure it the fuck out. You, you know why there are really no original fucking members of, of Guns N' Roses left? Because he made them wait three fucking hours. Yeah. You want an appetite reunion? Tell them to fucking stop being a douchebag. And also, that goes into overages, and the band doesn't make money because you got to pay all these. Uh, exactly. It's ridiculous. It, if it happens once, whatever. But if you're yeah. doing it over and over again, it just shows hey, that you're. Men without yeah. hats wouldn't do that. That's Absolutely right. Absolutely not. Thank they you, actually go on three and they hours can dance early. If they wanted. <laughs> I walked into a Men Without Hats concert one time. They had halfway through. They were still doing the Maypole dance. I'm like, guys, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to do that song. That's my now. Band. I love how everyone you thinks do that, that song. I like you know, like I have such little talent that like all these other people have like a lot of talent in their pinky. It's but always for the what? Pinky. What are they always shockers? The, they doing shockers? Pinky. Is that what it is? Always the pinky. It's I don't always know why it's always the pinky. Why Jason, the pinky? Peel, Jason Paul. Jason Paul. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he used to have more talent than his pointer finger. <laughs> <laughs> hey Corey, the overage on a concert like after eleven o'clock, the curfew isn't it like about ten thousand bucks lot, for, like, for like five Not minutes, that, but, a I thousand mean, dollars a minute or something like that. You got to pay f to keep the the loaders. You got to pay f uh, oh, like the owner. I mean, it's time and a half. I mean, it's it's everything. And then you bring the union into it. It's even Christ. it's even crazier, man. And it's avoidable. It's not well, necessary. Yeah, to go on you that don't way. have to do it. Also, I like playing for my fans. I like playing shows for my fans. I lose my mind if we're two minutes late. And, and, oh, that's so and, white of you, Corey. Thank you. And we I talk, appreciate we that. We talked a lot of the members of Guns N' Roses, and, and they said that cost them a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, They man. lost a lot of fucking money because Axel would uh, t uh, do that type of shit. In defense of Axel, the last year and a half, he's been going on stage exactly on time. Yeah, maybe he got out of that. I, but, yeah, I think he got Yeah, but point. is that because they told them it, that the show actually started three hours earlier? So yeah, then, you know, I mean, because I've had to do that to a couple people. It's like, look, dude, we go on in, in like 30 minutes. Actually, we have an hour. Is he still so. doing it? Is he still good? His yeah. voice and everything? Yeah. He got, they do a three-hour show. He's still heavy? His band. Yeah, you got he's a little, still fat. They find one picture of him where he, he's, <laughs> and they just blow that up and throw it out there and stuff like let's, that. He does a good show. Let's take one more call here. Uh, Dan in Cleveland. Dan. Hi, Dan. Welcome Dan aboard. Hey. Hey, you gotta love it when the fry cook from Applebee's calls in and talks about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Corey, I fucking love you guys, man. I, I hardly, I never get to see you guys. Last time I saw you was in Jersey, actually, with uh, in between. I think it was the Mayhem Fest. You played with uh, As I Lay Dying, which is, of course, we all know what happened. Well, there, yeah, we we do know what happened with that band. <laughs> um, I'm curious, uh, man, if, if you think you'll ever be a uh, Mushroomhead Slipknot tour. You know, we've been talking about that and trying to kind of find a, a a way to make it happen, and it's it's just it's just about you know trying to get the uh, the schedules to line up. So uh, you know we're we're trying to you know and I know we've awesome. kind of reached out to to see what's going on and uh, you know hopefully sometime you know we'll we'll you know, we'll see it happens. If not, hopefully you just come back to Cleveland. Oh, dude, absolutely. I mean, we'll we'd love to come back. By the way, we're looking at a picture of Axel Rose where he looks like Burt Lahr. What a <laughs> fucking awful photo. Yeah, that's the awful one. That, wow. That that's that's the, the one I was talking about. That made the rounds. Uh, I think we got to start wrapping up, unfortunately. <laughs> how, how many days a year are you out there on the road? 
Oh, with three Christ. kids, a lot. I mean, it's. I mean, you I never mean see we got to the point anymore. where we make sure we at least get like a month off, you know, so we can remember what our houses look like. But uh, for the most <laughs> part, man, we tour a lot. So, uh, but like I said, I mean, I, I'm I've been fortunate enough to kind of you know get to the point where I can afford to bring the family out. So. Luckily, my my time away from them is is has has shrunk down a lot. So, um, yeah. but like I said, it's a good problem to have. You know, it could be worse. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he goes and does the stone sour thing in between the slip, and the thing just takes off. He's like, holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> was, I was, this was supposed to be one and done. It was supposed was to be thinking? just a little yeah. side thing for yeah. a little bit. Now you got to worry about that. Well, Comedians yeah. can't do that. Like, we can't just branch off. Like, Jim's not doing something with props. Really? Yeah. yeah, I, know. Know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I envy that. And, and it's, it's like fun. Yeah, and it's successful. And to be uh, able to cover songs that you like. Like, what a fun fucking life that yeah, is. Yeah, man. man. I mean, so, it's... Corey, what did you make this year? Liquid? We talking liquid or we just talking assets? No, just assets. Well, uh, you know, I think I, you know, I, I cleared a bit. Jesus I, Christ, I, I cleared like enough it. that they offered me one of those Amex black cards. Yeah, yeah, and uh, wow. I, I turned it down. Well, even though you're racist? Well, <laughs> no. Yes. They offered me one, but it was a lung. <laughs> it was a lung. Um, so the book is called uh, You're Making Me Hate You, and uh, it's now July 9th. So tonight in Huntington here in New York, go out to Long Island, 7 o'clock. It's a great place for signing the book yeah. review. And then the 12th, if, if you're in Edina, Minnesota, Barnes & Noble at 1 in the afternoon, and then July 19th. Go out if you're out in LA. Go to Book Soup, which is a great, great bookstore. Yeah. And uh, there's so many shows. Um, Asbury Park was last night. Detroit is coming up. Chicago. Jesus. You can go to thecoreytaylor.com. There's an E in Corey. So thecoreytaylor.com and Corey Taylor Rock on Twitter. I'm and following, then, and I'm following sl- you right now, Corey. Yeah. And the Slipknot yeah. tour is starting in what, like two weeks? Or three uh, weeks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, July 25th, I think. Yeah, I, I wrap this up. I got six days off. And I fly right in and start that tour, so. Nice. <laughs> Grab it where you can. I'm going to take a nap on the plane. Jeez. Just so I can I make sure so. that I'm, you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And get on stage on time. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. And see Slipknot live. It's, it's, it was am- it's Oh, yeah, insane. I saw you guys at Rock on the Range. Amazing. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, a good, that was a good fucking show, man. That was a really good night. Last concert I saw Jim Navis. Oh, he was oh. so good. <laughs> 1972. I tell you what, yeah, the guy was terrific. I'll tell you. Yeah. The no. man had an angelic voice. He really did. He Nothing really did. like shoving a yam in your own asshole and Wonderful. hearing, oh, my papa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you say yam? Yeah, yeah I, could, I, was trying to think of a, I was trying to think of a vegetable that would hurt and be degrading. <laughs> and baby carrot wasn't cutting it. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking yam. You picked it perfectly. Oh, Thanksgiving will never be the same. <laughs> With that, Jim Norton's at the Brigada this weekend. Yeah, tomorrow and Saturday. And Saturday. And go to my website Bring for the rest yams. of the nonsense. <laughs> yeah, bring and, your yams. I'll sign them. And Florentine <laughs> just killed it for us today. Thanks, Florentine. Where are we going to be at? This man? weekend, Friday, Saturday, Stitches Comedy Club in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And next Thursday, July 16th, the Improv in Hollywood, California with Morgan Murphy and oh. Jason Lawhead. And finally, Nick DiPaolo. The uh, Ridgefield Playhouse, July 18th, Ridgefield, Connecticut. And then uh, Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. Beautiful. July 22nd out in L.A. Nice. And go to, uh, you know, my podcast at riotcast.com. NickDip.com. NickDip.com. Get all that information. And, uh, you know, I got another fucking book to read. I know. I, I don't like I'm this. I'm sorry. Hey, trust me. It's a quick read. Fuck. It's, it's very quick. I'm getting it. Corey People first. read it in line while they were waiting for me to sign it. It's called You're it. Making Me Hate You. I, I got to read Corey's this book. Corey's first book, Seven Deadly Sins, is great, too. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Yeah. Let me read this one. All right. I'm just going backwards. I think we're I done. celebrate this whole catalog. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're out. Right? We're out. Yeah. And if you're not yeah. a Slipknot fan, check out The Devil and I, and you'll be a fan. Oh, can it's... we play uh, Love Gun? I, I wrote yeah, that yeah, man, yeah. How do we it's, fu- uh, it's, it's, Stone it's, Sour, Love Gun. Yeah, Google. Do we have Stone Sour, Love Gun? He's, he's, you got to try this? If not, we'll look, uh, we'll look oh, on... Oh, yeah, look for it online. It's not in our Dillette system. We'll look on uh, the YouTube. Is yeah. it on the yeah, YouTube? Yeah, the tubes. Are, the tu- the YouTube. Stone Sour, Love Gun. Let's see if we get a good copy of this. Of course, they can just put it on their fucking home Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, we got it. I'm the Margarita. I'll get it. There's an ad. I just want Paul Stanley to acknowledge me. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm always retweeting him. I'm such a groveling fruit when it comes to kids. <laughs> I'm the worst. We leave you with Stone Sour, Love Gun. Corey, thanks again. Man. No worries, man.